morning right here in Broadbent Arena. We will be starting this morning with our Junior Shorthorn Plus show over in the west side of Broadbent. And in our east side, we will be starting with our Junior Hereford show. Again, we are starting today with our Shorthorn Plus and your Hereford show. And I would like to take this time to introduce your judge here today over in your Shorthorn Plus show, Mr. Kyle Galuli. Mr. Galuli is the manager of CES President Cattle and a purebred Angus and Hereford op and owns a purebred Angus and Hereford operation in Wadley, Georgia. A native of Indiana, Kyle is a 2002 graduate of Purdue University and was a member of the livestock judging team. Growing up showing both Angus and Hereford cattle, he met his wife, Jennifer. They have two daughters, two children, Grant and Diana Kate. Kyle is a past president of Georgia Cattlemen's Association. He has judged in over 25 states as well as Canada. If you could, please join me in giving Mr. Kyle Galuli a round of applause for coming out and evaluating your Shorthorn Plus show. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 50th annual North American here in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to introduce our judge in our Hereford show today, Mr. Danny Harker. Danny and his wife, Jill, have two sons, Luke and Chase. Danny is a graduate of Purdue University, where he studied ag econ. Danny is in the Simmental cow-calf business and specializes in raising show heifers. He has had the privilege to judge all over the country. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our Hereford judge today, Mr. Danny Harker. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pleasure for me to be here. Certainly thank the North American, I thank the Shorthorn Association and the kind people here that put these events together for asking a guy like me to come out and be a part of it. And uh, 
Just look forward to your show this morning. Nice pair of heifers that you lead off your Shorthorn Plus show here uh, on a nice Saturday morning. I'm going to leave them as they walked in. Uh, the calf up front, the dark red female, solid made heifer, really feminine, really sound structured, just appropriate in her angles up front through her shoulder, from her hooks back and pins down. When you set her off into motion, I just think has the distinct advantage in the way she hits her stride and moves around the ring. And I think it got a lot of nice days ahead of her. The effort that falls into second, the roan female, certainly has a pounds advantage today, the advantage in terms of shape and power from the ground up and rear forward. Uh, female got a beautiful top in her. You love the dimension back through her pin set. And as you work your way forward down that top, a lot of shape and turn out over that loin edge. My problem with her is at the ground. She's a female that just gets more rigid in her pasture joints. She gets a little bit awkward in that hock as you set her off on the go today. So when you get these heifers out moving, just doesn't hit that stride quite as sound, quite as accurate as the heifer that leads off ahead of her. But a nice pair of heifers to start your show this morning. And placings over in Class 1 in your Shorthorn Plus Junior Show. First place out of Class 1 goes to entry number 1. Fancy looker exhibited by Clay Lynn of Gunnersville, Alabama. That heifer weighs 404 pounds. And second place in that class goes to entry number 3. NFS Rosemary 601 exhibited by Clayton Nolan of Middle Ohio. That heifer weighs 547. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. Now entering your ring will be class two late spring heifer calves. Well, good morning. It's an honor and a privilege to be out here on the green shavings this morning to sort these Hereford cattle. And uh, we start off with a class that is definitely a really, really outstanding class. The top end of this class, I think there's two huffers that are really good in terms of their structure, in terms of their build, and in terms of their type. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the bigger, stouter one to start off this class with. Really long-bodied individual. You love the look that she gives you from the side, the power, and the extra shape and dimension she has down that top. Just a really nice heifer to start off this class with. The heifer here in second, very complete, ultra feminine kind of heifer. When you look at her on the paper, she is a little higher there on that birth weight number, but that's one I think just needs a little bit more time to get her up over that first place heifer, but super complete, super feminine type of female, just needs a little bit more power at this stage of the game to get in front of that one in front of her. Another nice, complete heifer coming out here in the third hole. I'd like to get this one to track just a little truer off those rear two when you set her into motion, but a heifer with plenty of shape and dimension, one that has got some nice look to her. Young man does a really nice job getting that one showed. The next heifer coming out, really long-bodied individual. She wants to get up in her spine when you set her into motion out here and kind of drop those pins down for that young man, but that's a heifer that's got a bright future in front of her. Extremely green heifer coming out here in the next hole. Her biggest advantage in the future is going to be the feed bucket and maturity, but that's one that really gives you a nice look. You like the extension that she has through that front one-third, ultra-feminine, just needs to catch up a little bit in terms of daily gain. And the young man uh, heifer coming out here next is one that just needs to balance up a little better, both on paper and both in, uh, in visual phenotype. And placings in class one over in your Hereford female show goes, first place goes to entry number six. 
So Showtime Princess Presley 324 exhibited by Delaney Turnerback of Knightstown, Indiana. And second place in that class goes entry number seven, Purple Paisley, exhibited by Kyle Gillespie of Tulin, Illinois. And third place in that class in automatic first place bread known goes to entry number four, SL Precious 3120, exhibited by Isaac Safers of Evergon, Virginia. And fourth place in that class, excuse me, yeah, fourth place in that class goes to entry number three, HPH Day Miss Jackson 101L ET, exhibited by Rhett Day of Telford, Tennessee. Fifth place in that class goes to entry number two, SRF Miss Thang, exhibited by Taylor Lauderman of Berman, Indiana. And sixth place in that class goes to entry number eight, exhibited by Craig Swaski of Newtown, New Jersey. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Now entering the ring is class two, spring heifer calves in your Hereford female show. Get into our second class, your Shorthorn Plus, an interesting trio. And, and I don't know that I come out here and, and find the one that just has to win, but I think as I step back and analyze them on the profile, this is the heifer that probably does the most good things for me just from a look and a balance perspective. Is she perfect at the ground? No. Uh, she gets a toad out a little bit up front. As you get around behind her, she maybe gets a little narrower gauged at the ground. That's one I'd just like to give a little more base width to and just maybe stouten her up ever so slightly through that lower quarter. But when you set her off into motion, I think she's the one that hits her stride the best. She's the most acceptable in terms of her knee flexibility and likewise from her hock down to the ground. Maybe my concern comes in what needs to be second. I guess for me, I'm going to go with the heifer that I just step back and see a little more type and kind like the heifer that wins the class. Really strong, really correct down her top line. Maybe like to set her tail head a little more uh, nicely within that rump structure. A heifer that doesn't handle her hind leg the best in the world. She's got a little set from her stifle to her hock and then even down to her pasture and joint. So when she travels, she's not as correct in her stride like the heifer that leads off the class. But I think more more so than the Roan heifer that follows her in second today. Just a nice depth of body, nice depth of muscle to her. She's actually thicker through that lower quarter than the heifer that leads off. The Roan heifer, she's the one that captivates you from a dimension standpoint. From the ground up, she's beautifully fitted. You like that about her. I'm not going to criticize the, the fit job. I don't need that much hair on one because for me, actually, it makes her look even smaller footed than what she already is. She's got maybe too small of a foot that she stands down on and then you build that leg up and it doesn't look uh, quite as compatible. From behind, that heifer is super thick. She's super big topped. I wish she had the depth of body to match that muscle shape that she presents from the point of her shoulder back. A heifer that just gets more rigid and tighter in that hock joint just doesn't handle that stability off of those rear two like you see in the heifer that leads off the class certainly today. But love the stoutness she presents to you. Nice trio of heifers. And first place in class two over in your Shorthorn Plus Junior Show goes to entry number five, weighing 656 pounds, FSF Blue Hazel 373, exhibited by Peyton Coors of Greensburg, Indiana. And second place in class two goes to entry number six, weighing 645 pounds, TGF Jenny's Limit, exhibited by Jordan Rutten of Bismarck, Illinois. And third place in that class goes to entry number four, this heifer weighing 648 pounds, Queen Sapphire, exhibited by Bristol A. Tipton of Hopedale, Ohio. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Now entering the ring is Class 3, late spring heifer calves over in your Shorthorn Plus Junior Show. These heifers' date of birth range from May 8th, 2023 through May 1st of 2023. Again, entering now is Class 3, late spring heifer calves. And I would like to take this time to introduce some royalty over in your Shorthorn Plus show. You, we have your national lassie queen, McKenna Giesman. She is the 2023-24 national shorthorn lassie queen. McKenna attended Michigan State University and resides in Ewart, Michigan. McKenna is the fourth generation to breed registered shorthorn cattle at Lakeside Farm. We do appreciate our national Lassie Queen being here today. 
We also have your alternative Lassie Queen, Miss Maggie Bass. Maggie is the 2023-24 alternate Lassie Queen. She is from Kansas. Prior to her national title, she has served as both Kansas Lassie Queen plus Princess. Maggie is involved in the Kansas Shorthorn and Junior Shorthorn Association. She is a high school senior and plans to major in ag education. If you could, please join me in giving our national Lassie Queen and alternative Lassie Queen a big round of applause for being with us today. Really nice class of April-born females here. We're going to start off with one I think just puts everything together in the most complete, most well-balanced package. She gives you a killer look from the side, really got some shape and some dimension to that hip up high there, a tremendous amount of pin set and width to her. I like that about her. But you set her into motion, she holds herself together as good as any of them in this class. It's a very outstanding heifer to start off this class with. The heifer coming out here in seconds, one that's a little behind in terms of weight per day of age, but when you study that one at the ground, when you study her going away from you, you look at her from the side view profile, I think that's one that's very high quality. She's not the biggest, she's not the oldest, most mature looking one in the class, but she's definitely got a bright future in front of her. I love the shape, the look that that one gives you from the side. I think that's going to make a really nice big one on down the road. Next effort coming out, it's one that's just a little deeper in her chest. I'd like to change that about her. I'd like to change her head shape a little bit. She's one that's a little plainer, a little coarser about that skull when you look at her for what I like to see, but that's a heifer that's got plenty of power and dimension to her. She's one I'd just like to clean up through that front one third to get her to compete with those two in front of her. The next heifer coming out, really long bodied individual, almost a little bit distracting out here within this class. If you could shorten that one up just a little bit, I think she'd handle herself on the move a little better. She wants to get up in her top as you get her out here and get her walking today, but that's a heifer with a lot of shape and a lot of dimension to her. You love the bone work under that one. The next one coming out, a little greener her type and kind. Uh, I think that's one that just needs a few more trips through the ring. The longer that young lady's out here, the better that one looks, but that's one that just needs to get everything put together as you park her from the side. The one coming out here is kind of a disadvantage on paper and also in terms of weight per day of age. Results of class two of your Hereford show in first place, entry number 13, Purple HB Vivian 81L, exhibited by Riley Rhodes of Carlinville, India, Illinois. In second place, entry number 15, Cup Kiwi, owned and exhibited by Morgan and Mason Love of Baltimore, Ohio. In third place, entry number 14, owned and exhibited by Annabelle, Annie Jane, and Andrew Johnson of West Alexandria, Ohio. Fourth place, entry number 11, Sam Stoughton. In fifth place, and also your Brennan-owned winner, exhibited by Taylor Lauderman of Bremen, Indiana. In sixth place, entry number 12, exhibited by Ella Patterson of Findlay, Ohio.
We would like to remind everyone over in the makeup ring, there are no aerosol cans allowed in Broadbent Arena. Again, there are no aerosol cans allowed in Broadbent Arena. Another nice class of plus sufferers that you bring to us, and, and I, I'll use the the numbers and the EPDs today at my discretion, and, and I'm going to study these cattle first and foremost, and then maybe uh, talk the numbers as I see fit. And, and if I'd say anything, these top two heifers uh, please you the most in terms of their growth, and, and I see that probably more so the numbers matching with that heifer in second than the heifer that leads off the class, but I do appreciate the, the quality growth numbers she possesses. But I think as you just sort these heifers out, you bring the two really sound structured ones to the top, and then this one's probably just a little bit neater to me on the profile. She's not as big, she's not as long bodied as the heifer in second, and so I discount her a little bit from that perspective. But just neater in that head, neck, shoulder junction, that shoulder into her four ribs, super deep bodied. Uh, I don't maybe need that much depth in one, uh, but she's so deep and, and it's precise. And, and where I say it's precise, her depth of flank matches her depth of body. And so I like that about her. But you set that heifer out on the motion, that heifer moves without effort. She's just so correct, so accurate in her stride. I think a really nice cow prospect in the making. This heifer at times, she wants to fight the halter a little bit. I think that works to her disadvantage out on the move. It makes her kind of get her back in her shoulder, kind of pulls her neck back into that shoulder junction today. If she just walk out like the heifer ahead of her, then I think you possibly could keep that heifer uh, in first like I initially had her. Another long bodied heifer, like I said, her numbers match her. She's a big growthy heifer. She's not too big for me. She's adequate in depth. She's adequate in muscle. And another heifer that moves super well today. Heifer in third probably matches the more the size and type of the heifer that wins the class. She's not as deep bodied as those two heifers ahead of her. This heifer is really correct. She doesn't change much, whether she's on the profile or out on the move, this heifer is good in her structure and you know she is because of that type that she keeps out here today. Again, she's not as deep, she doesn't carry that muscle quite as stout down to that lower portion of her quarter, but a heifer that I really like from the ground up and rear forward. The heifer behind her is a bigger, stouter heifer. I give her that. She's thicker ended, she's bigger boned. She's a heifer that I like best out on the move. I think that's a heifer that I can move up into third if you just simply watch these cattle walk. When you stop and get that heifer parked, she can come up in her spine ever so slightly. She's a little tighter hinged out through her rump and then that kind of affects that hind leg. And so when you stop her, she doesn't look like she's quite uh, as nice balanced as the top trio ahead of her. The roan heifer that comes out next, super thick-ended, really deep-bodied. Again, just plainer fronted, plainer up through the upper portion of her neck, a little bit awkward back through her rump and tail head conjunction, but that's a heifer that's got a good hind leg underneath her, sets down on a good flexible pasture and joint. Then the heifer that concludes the class, one of the frailer made heifers out here today. She's just lighter muscled, she's frailer in her bone work, she's plainer up in her head and neck. But you stop and get that heifer set up. She's a heifer that's really correct down her top line. She's a heifer that's super long from the point of her shoulder back through her center portion of her quarter. Heifer's got some good pieces, just comes into a really competitive class with the top pair. Another really nice class of Herefords over here. Uh, we start off with one I think uh, this young lady's brought out that's just ultra complete. She's one that's big top, big hip. You set her into motion, she's got a good foot under her and a really good groundwork under her in terms of her skeleton. Uh, when you get her out and get her going, you like this heifer quite a bit just on the move. But when she gets her parked, that's a heifer that really gives you a nice look from the side. Good and extended through that front one third, but yet still got some muscle and some shape when you get in behind her. That's that's one that's a, a very easy class winner for me out here today. The next step for the young man's brought out another one, super complete in her type and kind. You like the extension that she has to her front one third, the way she lays in nice and neat in that shoulder, the angulation to that shoulder and the slope to that knee. I think that's a heifer that's got a bright future in front of her for that young man. A very outstanding heifer there going out in the second hole. Another one, super complete individual here in the third. The horned heifer's one that's carrying a little bit more brisket at this stage of the game. 
and then two in front of her, but super complete, well balanced, good structurally sound individual there going out in the third hole. The next heifer coming out, I think this is one you get off of her and look at her. She just looks a little shotgun bellied out here today. I'd like to make her a little deeper through the center portion of her body. Uh, that's a heifer that's got plenty of muscle and shape to her, just wants to get a little hard off those rear two as you set her into motion. Another one of those heifers that needs to belly down in the center part of her body. I think that's a heifer that you could just free that one up a little bit off of both ends when you get her into motion, uh, that get her up a little bit here within this class. The next heifer coming out, it's one that just doesn't balance up quite as well as I'd like to see out here today. And the heifer rounding out the class is one that's just in a disadvantage in terms of pounds and performance, just needs to be a little better looking. First call, Class 6 Herefords. First call, Class 6 Herefords to the Makeup Arena. This is your first call, Class 8 Shorthorn Females. First call, Class 8. I won't get uh, real lengthy in these divisions. I try to talk them enough in class to give you an idea of what I'm seeing. But uh, a nice division of cattle. First off, let's give them a round of applause. These exhibitors bring you some nice calves today. I think these three before me are, are, are a good type. You start to see kind of what I look for. I want them to be feminine. I want them to be sound. And I think these three heifers come out and they give you that. They might do it in a little bit different pieces. If I come out and I try to find two that go together, I think the closest pair, certainly for me, uh, not only in this division, but was also in that class. And I'm going to use your uh, red heifer from your May class and follow with the second place for reserve. Congratulations to those two young ladies. And over in your Shorthorn Plus Junior Show, your late spring heifer calf champion comes out of class number three and goes to entry number 14, HHCC Sweet Dreams Rosa Ferrari, exhibited by Kayla Henderson of Charlotte, Montana. Congratulations. And your reserve division champion comes out of the same class and goes to entry number seven, BONL Prime Crystal 314L, exhibited by Betsy Horry of Elizabethtown, Indiana. Congratulations to those exhibitors. I would like to take this time to read over class three results. First place in that class goes to entry number 14 with this heifer weighing 593 pounds, exhibited by Kayla Henderson of Charlotte, Montana. Second place in that class goes to entry number seven, exhibited by Betsy Horn of Elizabethtown, Indiana. Third place in that class goes to entry number nine, exhibited by G. By Byron Beauty, exhibited from West Uni Unity, Ohio. And fourth place in that class goes to entry number 12, exhibited by Tyler Days of Terman, Ohio. Fifth place in that class goes to entry number 10, exhibited by Cooper Hedrick of Fremont, Ohio. And sixth place in that class goes to entry number eight, exhibited by Troy Carter Miller of Charlotte, Michigan. Congratulations to those, those exhibitors. Now entering the ring is class six, early spring heifer calves. These heifers' date of birth range from April 28th through April 7th of 2023. Again, entering the ring is class six, early spring heifer calves in your Shorthorn Plus show. Shorthorn entry number 25 to the Makeup Arena. Shorthorn entry number 25 to the Makeup Arena. Hereford entry number 47 to the Makeup Arena. Hereford entry number 47. I would like to take this time to introduce some more royalty over in your Shorthorn Plus show, Miss Victoria Thompson, your Alabama State Lassie Queen. Victoria Thompson is the 2022-23 Alabama Lassie Queen and an active AJSA member since 2012. She is currently attending Southern Union State Community College and plans to transfer to 
Auburn University pursue a major in ag education. Also with us is Miss Lisa Chamberlain from your Minnesota Lassie Queen. Lisa Chamberlain is the 2022-23 Minnesota Lassie Queen and an active member of the AJSA since 2021. She plans to attend South Dakota State University will she, where she will major in pre-vet medication. If you could, please join me in welcome, welcoming those Lassie Queens with us today. Second call, class number six, Hereford Females. Second call, class number six, Hereford Females. This is your first call, class seven, Herefords. First call, class seven, Herefords. Second call, class eight, Shorthorns, your second call, class eight, Shorthorns. First call, class number nine, first call, class nine, Shorthorns. Results of class number three of your junior Hereford show in first place entry number 16, SEL Letty 310L, exhibited by Sage Lawrence of Avila, Indiana. In second place, entry number 21, SCG Day Sweet Diana 23L, exhibited by Rhett Day of Telford, Tennessee. In third place, entry number 25, Ellen Todd. In fourth place, entry number 20, Nathan Miller. In fifth place, entry number 23, Madeline Graham. In sixth place, entry number 17, exhibited by Hadley and Olivia Ubeck. And in seventh place, entry number 22, exhibited by Emma Powell. This is your third and final call, class number six, Herefords. Third and final call, class six, Herefords. Second call, class seven, Herefords. Second call, class seven. We start off this class of Hereford Heifers with the one that's definitely a true outlier within this class. <clears throat> she's one that's got the power, she's got the shape, she's got the look from the side. You set her into motion, she doesn't disappoint you. That's one that's definitely got a uh, bright future, I think, in the show ring in front of her on down the road for this young lady. But you love the power, the balance, the eye appeal that that one carries around the ring. She's just awful hard to take your eyes off of once she comes in here. Young man's heifer coming out here next. Uh, really, really long-bodied heifer. Almost a little bit of a disadvantage in this class because it makes her appear maybe not quite as deep as she actually is. But that's a heifer in terms of the fundamentals, in terms of soundness and structure and length of body, length of neck. I think that's one that's really got a neat future in front of her. Just needs a little bit more feed and a little bit more time, but that's one that's a very high quality heifer there going out in the second hole. Young lady here in the third hole has got one that's not really wanting to give me a good look out here, but that's one I think's got all the right parts and pieces there. Just needs a few more trips around the ring to come out here and show off the best of her ability, but that's a heifer that's really long 
strong in her hip design. You like the overall look and the shape and the dimension that one has. Just needs to be, give you a better, better look from the side when you get her parked. The next effort coming out here is one that's a little coarser in that shoulder design than what I'd like to ideally see. When you set that one into motion, she wants to get up there in the center part of her back, kind of wants to walk outside of herself here today, so that's why she ends up in that spot. The next heifer, extremely green heifer within this class. I'd like to give that heifer some more muscle. So she needs some more shape, some more punch from stifle to stifle and up down that top. But that's a heifer that's got a neat look. And, and I think that one's on down the road and with some feed and some time is going to be really nice. The next heifer coming out, you like that heifer standing still till you get to really analyze in that shoulder and that knee design. She's extremely straight and that knee wants to get more upright in that shoulder than the ones in front of her. But a very nicely presented heifer. The next two heifers coming out just don't have the overall balance and IAP I'd like to see today. Third and final call in class eight shorthorns. This year, third and final call in class eight shorthorns. Second call, class nine. Second call in class nine shorthorns. Nice class a, April heifers here and black heifer that leads off the group does so very handily. Just study one from the ground up and rear forward or from the front to rear, doesn't matter with her. Uh, she puts all the good pieces together. Exquisite up through her head and neck where that neck comes high out of her shoulder and still smooth and angular and correct in that shoulder. At times, she's wanting to act up with the gentleman a little bit. I think if she just come out and just get collected, that heifer just blows this class away from the standpoint of structure and balance and eye appeal. The, the red uh, orange roan heifer here in second is an awfully powerful heifer. If I'd change her more than anything, I wish she'd blend from the back side of that shoulder into her fore rib a little prettier today. She just gets a little bit, I don't really think she's a, a coarse shouldered heifer. I think there's just enough break in that heart today that concerns me a little bit with her long term and, and doesn't quite give you that eye appeal up from that shoulder forward obviously that you see with the heifer before. But from her center rib on back, that's a big Big rib, thick-ended, big top tougher that's certainly still really sound at the ground. She has the distinct advantage in terms of top shape over the red and white heifer that's in third. This heifer's probably a little more pleasing to me in that regard through her front one-third that I talked about and criticized with the heifer in second. She is smoother shouldered. She does blend and transition into her fore rib better today. Love the depth of body. But you get to the upper portion of her skeleton and she just gets a little lighter muscle, a little flatter over that loin edge for me. Roan heifer behind her, initially in this class, this heifer's got a lot of good pieces to her. She's really attractive, really maternal looking through her front end. She's really strong and correct and level down her top. Nice balance to her, except when you get back into that rear leg. Those hocks get pretty close together when you get around behind her and watch her travel away. Young man does a nice job. I told him and complimented him on his showmanship ability today. He's got a nice heifer, really long body. One of the longer sighted heifer in this class. However, she just we in the department, uh, State Department, along with the USDA, in keeping up with what's going on in the industry across this country and in the world. As a matter of fact, you had to be aware. She's got, just wish there was more center body to that female. Nice class of cattle, nice effort to lead us off. Third and final call, class seven, Herefords. Third and final call, class number seven, Herefords. This is going to be your first call, class eight. First call, class eight, Herefords. Your class four results of your Hereford show in first place entry number 32, CFCC Red Hot Ruby 251L, owned by Kyla Rhodes of Ada, Oklahoma. In second place and also your class winner of your bread and own division goes to Womack Lady Playmate 374, exhibited by Levi Womack of Pembroke, Kentucky. In third place entry number 28, Paisley Van Horn. Fourth place entry number 37, Molly Elizabeth Biggs. Fifth place, entry number 26, Corey Stumpf. In sixth place, entry number 31, Braley Houseworth. In seventh place, entry number 34, Katie Simmons. And in eighth place, entry number 36, Jacob Simmons. 
And placings over in Class 6, over in your Shorthorn Plus Junior Show, are as follows. First place, Wayne 729, goes to entry number 15, CF Mona Lisa 3953, exhibited by Tyler Doss of Terman, Ohio. And second place, Wayne 767, goes to Hook Trust Margie, exhibited by Blake Darless of Jane, Janesville, Wisconsin. Third place, weighing 706, goes to entry number 20, CF Mona Lisa 382, exhibited by Josie Besser of Cayman, Ohio. And fourth place in that class goes to entry number 17, RC Blues Perfect Penny, exhibited by Piper Campbell of Eaton, Ohio. And fifth place in that class goes to entry number 21 at Miss Dolly, exhibited by Chase McAllister of Bethel, Ohio. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. Now in your ring is class seven early spring heifer calves. These heifers' date of birth range from April 3rd through April 1st of 2023. Again, over in your Shorthorn Plus Junior Show, now in the ring is class eight, seven. Third and final call, class nine, Shorthorns, your third and final call, class number nine, Shorthorns. Wow, what an outstanding pair of heifers here at the top of this class. We're going to use one that's not the biggest one we've seen all day, but I'll tell you what, in terms of completeness and, and balance and eye appeal, she's the one that comes to the top of this class for me real easily. You get up on her, and she's huge top for this stage of the game. She's one that I think's in the right condition and being brought along at the right uh, rate to go on and be a really good one next year at this time even. I think that heifer, when that young lady gets her stuck from the side, you look at her, she's She's awesome in terms of her eye appeal, the extension that she has to that front one third, but yet that bone work that's under this one, the foot that's under this one, I think that's a very easy class winner for me, and the young lady does an awesome job of getting that one showed. The next one coming out, another one that's highly presented, the young lady does an awesome job with that one too. I think when you, the biggest difference when you get up on top of these, this one doesn't have that overall shape and dimension down her top to what our class winner does, but she is awesome through that front one third. You like the 
extension that she has, the way she lays in nice and flat in that shoulder, and you set that one into motion, she's tremendously sound and gets out and goes around the ring. I'd like to change that one's foot a little bit today to compete with that one in front of her. That's one that's a little longer toed and a little pointier toed at this stage of the game, but the young lady does an awesome job of getting that one showed. The next heifer coming out, a big high-performing kind of heifer. She's one that uh, just gets a little coarser in that front end. I'd like to change her in that shoulder design, kind of relax her in that knee to get her up any higher, but a very nice heifer. The young lady does an awesome job getting presented. Another heifer that comes out, a little curlier haired kind of female, uh, but that's one and some shape and dimension to her. Just doesn't put everything together quite in a nice, neat, pretty package as some of those in front of her do today. Young lady coming out here in the next hole, one that's really flat, shouldered, and gives you a nice look from the side, but you get in behind her and she kind of disappoints you in terms of true muscle. I'd like to see a little more shape and dimension from stifle to stifle to get that one up any higher here in this class. Really high performing, big, stout, powerful one coming out next, but one that's a little deeper in her chest. She's a little uglier and plainer through that front one third than the ones in front of her. I'd just like to make her a little neater to get her on up anymore. Very ultra complete female coming out next, but she's a small frame female. One that I read is just being real moderate in terms of her type and kind in the end point. Uh, one that I'd just like to stretch out and bring up a little bit in her frame size to get her up any higher. The next two females coming out just need to balance up, have a little better eye appeal to get them up any higher for me today. Thank you. Another really nice class, April's here in your Shorthorn Plus division, and like this heifer up front extremely well. Again, one that's kind of easy to start for me in a class uh, that's got a lot of competition, yet a lot of differences. This heifer fits my type and mold a little bit more ideally today. From the ground up, really, really sound, really attractive from the profile. A heifer that's got a nice, beautiful head on her, slender necked and yet still the same as you tie into the front side of her shoulder and as you go into her fore rib. She's appropriate in the amount of depth of rib that she's got. She's appropriate in terms of the muscle that she's got. So that's probably my word of the day for her is she's just appropriate in so many aspects. And I don't know that she just blows you away in any one regard, but she puts all the good pieces together. This sufferer is so deep. She's so powerful from behind. And I think almost at times that works to her disadvantage out on the move because She's got so much to her that she doesn't really have maybe as elegant of a stride as the heifer that leads off ahead of her. Maybe gets up in her top line, maybe gets a little tighter hinged out through her rump. I don't know that that heifer's as long-sided. I think she's longer in her rib than she is longer from her hook's back. And so I'd give her a little more extension, not only from that regard, but maybe even from her shoulder forward. But you love that one in terms of three-dimensional shape and capacity. Nice pair of heifers. I think maybe my close call is probably between third and fourth. Uh, this heifer probably has more to her down her top. She's long-sided. She's got the length of muscle that I really like, but she's also got probably more shape right out of the top side of her shoulder and maintains that all the way back. She's not the most expressive from behind as you get down to that lower one-third of her quarter and her stifle today. That's a heifer that keeps herself together really nice at on the move. Young man's got a heifer that I like a little neater up front. She's more alert, she's more attractive, more ladylike about that head. Maybe a little bit too slender neck for me. I, I don't, that's maybe not my type, but she does give you a little neater look from the profile than the heifer that stands before. As you work your way from the back side of her shoulder down her top, she's not as dimensional down through that upper portion of her skeleton, even though I do like the center rib and lower one third that she's got. A little plainer back through her rump than the heifer that leads off ahead of her. Red, uh, black and white heifer to conclude the class, a heifer that gives you a sharp look from the side, just gets too upright in her structure for me today. She's straighter from the point of her shoulder down to the ground, she's straighter from her stifle down, and so when you get that heifer out going today, she just gets a bit rigid, a bit choppy in her stride. That's a heifer that's got true muscle and true rib, uh, just like to put her in a little different structural design. First call in class 12, Shorthorns. Your first call in class number 12, Shorthorns to the Minkup Arena. Second call in class 8, Herefords. Second call in class 8, Herefords. And placings over in class 7 in your junior Shorthorn Plus show are as followed. First place. Weighing 766 goes to entry number 24, CF Dream Only 473, exhibited by Lindsay Jester of Moreland, Indiana. And second place, weighing 857, 
It goes to entry number 25, AGLE Primo's Lady Peach, exhibited by Carly Goats of Oak Harbor, Ohio. Third place in that class, weighing 714 pounds, goes to entry number 22, LGF Miss Red Rosie Compton, 2130L, exhibited by Lindsey Kaiser of Morning View, Kentucky. And fourth place in class seven goes to entry number 23, WJL Mona Lisa, FER 1510, exhibited by Wyatt Lou Allen of Adamsville, Ohio. And fifth place in class seven goes to entry number 27, NBS Lila X29L, exhibited by Troy Carter Miller of Charlotte, Michigan. Congratulations to those exhibitors. And now entering the ring is class eight, early spring heifer calves. These heifers' date of birth range from March 28th through March 16th of 2023. Again, now entering the ring is Class 8 Early Spring Heifer Calves in your Shorthorn Plus show. Back over here on the Hereford side, I'll tell you what, uh, I think the prettiest sight in the world is seeing a highly presented Hereford female out here on the green shavings and uh, our division lineup out here. We definitely have a set of them that are presented to the max and they look awesome out here as I sit back and I go through these. There's several ways that you could do this, but in terms of just my preferences, in terms of cattle having some power and some punch and some muscle and being there today for the show ring, I think there's one that comes to the top real easy easily for me and there's another one that I think is extremely bright future type female I'm gonna go out here and pick your champion reserve but let's give these kids all a big round of applause for an awesome Hereford calf show so far Results of class five of your junior Hereford show in first place entry number 41, Ella J Jungle Queen, 3010, exhibited by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. In second place, entry number 39, Showtime, LLFF Roxanne, 320, exhibited by Caitlin and Courtney Hockemeyer of Columbia City, Indiana. In third place, entry number 44, exhibited by Morgan Riley. In fourth place, entry number 42, exhibited by Aiden Dempsey, in fifth place, entry number 46, exhibited by Luke Grisso. In sixth place, entry number 43, Courtney Hall. In seventh place, entry number 45, exhibited by Amberlyn Christianberry. And in eighth place, entry number 47, exhibited by Ella Patterson. In ninth place, entry number 220, exhibited by Mariana Henry. Second call, class 12 shorthorns, second call, class 12 shorthorns. This is your third and final call, class 8 Herefords, third and final call, class 8 Herefords. Entry number 72, Herefords to the Bank of Arena, entry number 72. And over in your Shorthorn side of the ring, I would like to take this time to introduce your Shorthorn Junior Board. Your president goes, is Xavier Ferris of Indiana. And your vice president from Oklahoma, Meredith Brevers. And your secretary from Texas, Amanda Smee. And your public relations director from Tennessee, Haley Ferguson. Your fundraising director from Texas, Braden DeBoard, and serving as one of your directors from Oklahoma, Ryan Lane. Another director is Samantha Van Horse from Ohio, and another director is Hannah Wetzel from Minnesota, and your last director is McKenna Evans from Texas. If you could give me, uh, help me give a round of applause to the Shorthorn Junior Boards for helping in the ring and all they do.
First call, Class 9 Herefords. Your first call, Class 9 Herefords. Third and final call, Class 12 Shorthorns. Your third and final call, Class 12 Shorthorns. Results of your junior Hereford show. Your champion spring heifer calf goes to entry number 32, CFCC Red Hot Ruby 25K, exhibited by Kyla Rhodes. Your reserve champion spring heifer calf and also your bread and own champion goes to entry number 41, Ella Jungle Queen 3010, exhibited by Ella Weldon. Congratulations, Hereford exhibitors. And really nice pair of heifers here to lead off this class at March heifers, I believe. But two females, I think, have some similarities, and yet they're really different. Uh, the heifer that leads off is, is really deep bodied. The, the problem is the heifer in second is super deep bodied. And, and if you like that, I don't have a problem with starting that uh, class with her. She's a heifer that's kind of in a different realm uh, from that regard. Is there uh, maybe more uh, white muscle in that heifer than the female up ahead of her? Maybe so from that regard, but that's a naturally deep bodied heifer too. And so I'm not going to sit here and get critical and say she's too deep. Uh, this heifer that wins, I just think, again, like I termed the, the previous class, just more appropriate uh, in, in all regards. Both heifers are super sound as you get them out on the move. The heifer that leads off, I just get around behind and I see maybe a more maternal look back through her rump structure and her pin setting and the muscle pattern that she's got to her from her pins down. 
That's a heifer that I really like her look up from her nose into her neck and her neck into her shoulder and then that flexibility that she's got from her knee down. The heifer in second, like I said, just to total volume and capacity and depth. You love that heifer extremely well. Maybe I could suck some of that lower one-third out and push that up a little higher into that upper rib cage, and I think that heifer would more closely match the heifer that leads off ahead of her. But again, she too is so sound structured, it's hard for me to put a lot of holes in that female. Two really, really nice ones. Heifer in third, I like on the stand still better than the move. When she gets out here walking, she starts to kick that tail head up a little bit too much. I'd like to lay that down in that rump a little neater today. But when the young lady stops and gets her parked, that's a good hip. That's a good hind leg that she's got to her. I like the angle from her stifle down to the ground. I like the extension of neck that she's got to her. Maybe a little bit uh, wastier down through that dew lap and down through her brisket in relation to those heifers in first and second. That's getting critical on a really nice heifer. Best showman award goes to this guy out here because he gets up, he dusts his jeans off, and he gets back to work, and that's what you're supposed to do. I commend him on a job well done. He's got a heifer, again, probably a female that you like better on the stand than out on the move. A lot of rib, a lot of dimension through her center skeleton and center quarter. Out on the move, she gets tighter hinged out through her hip. She gets a little bit awkward in that hock joint placement when you sit down underneath you. Likewise with the young lady in the red shirt that goes out now, those hocks get closer together as she travels away. More maternal looking, more ladylike about her front one third than her roan heifer that concludes the class. Roan heifer that ends up, she's the thicker made, deeper bodied female. A lot of substance that she stands down on just gets too awkward off of those rear two for me. Nice pair of heifers to lead off that March class. Really outstanding pair of heifers here at the top of this class. Uh, we start off with one I think's just put together as nice a one as we've seen all day in terms of her underline, in terms of her chest floor, her front one third, the condition this one carries. She does it well at this stage of the game, but uh, you get up on her and she's got a tremendous amount of top shape. You love the hip design that that female has in her. I like the natural look that she has to that underline when you get off and you look at her, you know, she's one that's Prevented, presented very, very nicely out here, and that young lady does an awesome job showing that class winner. The next effort coming out, I think it offers a lot of nice parts and pieces to her. We just need to put it together a little better out here today. She's wanting to get off of her. She wants to get a little cut up there in that chest floor. You'd like to kind of change her there as you view her from the side, but that's a heifer that's got plenty of shape and dimension. Clean her up just a little bit in that front one-third to compete with that one in front of her, but two very, very good heifers. The next heifer coming out, the young man's done an awesome job of getting this one showed out here. She's one I'd just like to clean up a little bit there in her chest. She wants to get a little full in that brisket here today, but that's one that's ultra complete, good in her shoulder design, good and sound and flexible. Going to make a very nice heifer for that young man to keep showing on down the road. Another really powerfully constructed one coming out next. I'd like to give her a little bit more fill up high. She's one that just kind of wants to, to have a little flatter rib cage when you get up on her. When you set her into motion, she needs to handle those rear two just a little bit better to get her up any higher within this class. Another big muscled heifer coming out next, but one I read is just being shorter hip. That's one that wants to get off and that hooks to the pins. Her tail head kind of sets up out of her a little too much. She tracks a little narrow as she goes away from you. The next heifer coming out is one of those that just doesn't have the balance or the eye appeal that she needs to compete with those in front. Same thing kind of goes with the next two. First call in class 13, Shorthorns. First call in class 13, Shorthorns. This year, second call in class 9, Herefords. Second call in class 9, Herefords. And placings over in Class 8 over in your Shorthorn Plus show are as follows. First place, weighing 796, goes to entry number 35. B.R. Ferrari Rose F205K, exhibited by Garrett Rishi of Spencer, Ohio. And second place in that class, weighing 801, goes to entry number 34. M.F.S. Lucy Masha 87. L, exhibited by Carter Corge of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And third place in that class, weighing 773 pounds, goes to entry number 28, CF Denim 371 Primo, exhibited by Amanda 
Annett of Utica, Ohio. And fourth place in that class goes to entry number 33, Fox Kesha Kate 305, exhibited by Maddox Reedy of Tuscola, Illinois. And fifth place in that class goes to entry number 32, uh, Slim Shardy 1G, exhibited by Emma Arnett of Brooksville, Ohio. And sixth place in class eight goes to entry number 31, Farah Nelly, exhibited by Gage Farrar of Oak Hill, Ohio. And please note that entry number 30 was a scratch. Now in the ring is class nine early spring heifer calves. These heifers' date of birth range from March 12th through March 2nd of 2023. Again, in the ring now is class nine shorthorn plus females. Results of class number six of your Junior Hereford Show in first place, entry number 62, VH756, Lexi 303, exhibited by Stormy Swain of Rockville, Indiana. In second place, entry number 61, Purple Bellamy 13L, owned and exhibited by Tessa Austin and McKenna Smith of Hubertus, Wisconsin. In third place, entry number 49, exhibited by Blake and Baylor DeHaven of Parker City, Indiana. In fourth place, entry number 51, Molly Elizabeth Biggs. In fifth place, entry number 54, Molly Elizabeth Biggs. In sixth place, entry number 48, exhibited by Ella Patterson. In seventh place, entry number 53, exhibited by Kirsten Blumler. And in eighth place, and also your class winner of your bread and own division, exhibited by Lacey Hauser. Third and final call, Class 9, Herefords, your third and final call, Class 9.
Second call, class 13, Shorthorns. Second call, class 13, Shorthorns. Interesting class here. And, and I don't know that one comes out here and just dominates and blows me away. I think the top pair need to go together. Uh, how you place them is probably according to preference. Uh, heifer that's up front uh, gets up in her spine a little bit out on the move. Really both heifers do, uh, but I think when she's out traveling, she holds herself together back through her rump. I think she's better from her hooks into her pins than her heifer in second today, and not only on the standstill, but as they travel. This heifer's maybe not quite as deep, right from her elbow back to her flank. Is she deep enough? Yes. Uh, again, if she just relax that top a little more, maybe have a little more boldness to her rib shape, maybe a little more exquisite up through her head and neck, then I think we start talking about an easy class winner. But I think these two heifers are, are pretty similar. The heifer in second is deeper. I like the depth of muscle that she's got to her. I don't know that her hind leg uh, is as good as the heifer that leads off, and so I think it's that whole hip and hind leg structure. It's not bad. I'm just trying to make comparisons. It's not as good as the heifer that leads off ahead, and I think that's what gets her beat today. Likewise, with the red roan heifer here coming out in third, uh, this heifer I thought initially might be up closer in that front end of the class, but she kind of comes up into her tail head out of her rump, she kind of cut up into her flank, her stifle set back a little further in that quarter. So really from her hooks back and pins down, that's where that heifer struggles. I think if she was deeper flanked, I think if she was leveler rumped, I think if that hind leg worked better, that would be the heifer that starts the class. This heifer I probably lost track of a little bit down at the end of that lineup. I think this heifer is pretty doggone good. She's not deep enough today. She's green, and, and I think she will be one that that'll, you'll really like down the road. Structurally, she just couldn't be at the end where I initially had her. She beats these two heifers behind her on movement alone. She's a better rump, better hind leg uh, when you get that uh, heifer out traveling from her stifle down to the ground. The darker red heifer behind her gets a little bit shuffled when she's out out traveling because she's straighter off of that rear leg. Wants to break a little bit, she gets coarser in her shoulder, gets a little weaker in that heart today. The heifer that still balances up maybe a little neater back through her rump uh, as she's traveling than the black heifer that concludes the class. I like a lot of things about this heifer here. Mostly center body. I think she's deep. I think she's bold ribbed. I think she's big topped. Just a little bit awkward in her neck, shoulder, shoulder four rib junction. A little bit awkward and straighter off of that hind leg and her hock joint when she goes. That's an interesting class. Really outstanding set of heifers here at the top of this class of January's. We're going to start off with the one that I think just offers more in terms of muscle, offers more in terms of shape. She offers more in terms of the groundwork, groundwork and the structure in that female when you set her into motion. And, you know, when I was a kid, I was taught that you start at the ground and you go up. And that's one that when you watch that one walk, you really admire a lot of things about that one. But you get up and you look at the rest of her and you love the look, you love the shape. You love the extra punch that that one has. Really, really good heifer to win that class. This young man's got one here in the second hole that offers some wild pieces. If you could change that one in terms of her brisket out here, I think that would kind of stir the top end up here, but uh, that's one that just needs to be chilled out a little bit on feed. She's starting to push that chest floor out quite a bit for me at this stage of the game, but that's a heifer that really gives you a cool look. You like the extension. You like the overall look that that one has just like to give that one a little more punch in terms of muscle tone her down a little bit in terms of that flesh the next heifer coming out She's the one with the muscle in this class. She is the heaviest muscled one in this class, but when you set her into motion, I'd like to change her off those rear two. She wants to kind of hammer down pretty hard on this right rear out here today, but uh, that's one I think's got a lot of cool parts and pieces to her. Just needs to be a little sounder to get up within those two in front of her, but a very nicely presented heifer young lady does an awesome job with. Young man coming out here next, got a brood cow in the making. She's one that's just a little chunkier in that front one third than I'd like to see at this game. 
game, but that's a heifer that's got a lot of good things about her. You like the length the body that that one has, the hip design that that one has. Just like to lean that one up a little bit through that front one third. The next heifer coming out, a really nice breed cow, but just doesn't have that overall pizzazz, that overall squareness of hip that I'd like to see to get her up any higher within this class. And another heifer that just lacks that overall look and that extra wow factor. First call, class 14, Shorthorns. First call, class 14, Shorthorns. First call, class 10, Herefords. First call, class 10, Herefords. And placings over in class nine in your short horn plus show are as followed. First place, weighing 784, goes to entry number 37, CFS Dream Lady 24K 2319, exhibited by Lindsay Kavanaugh of Mis Memphis, Michigan. And second place in that class, weighing 743, goes to entry number 41, Hughes Luna 112, exhibited by Lydia Kerr of Bloomington, Indiana. Third place in class nine goes to entry number 43, weighing 731 pounds, SGSC, BWEL, Miss Pure and Holy, exhibited by Riley Harton of Gaylord, Michigan. And fourth place in that class goes to entry number 42, A&D Dolly May, exhibited by Bailey Kelly of Foster, Kentucky. And fifth place in that class goes to entry number 39, H. In our Miss Bella, exhibited by Mallory Mill of Philo, Ohio. And sixth place in that class goes to entry number 40, Twin Bridge Black Diamond, exhibited by Lila Clark of Flower, Indiana. Again, now we are now ready to select your early spring heifer calf champion, Mr. Kyle. The mic is all yours. Results of Class 7 of your Hereford Show in first place, entry number 71, weighing 873. Goes to Honk Rainey, 6L, exhibited by Nolan Lee of Wellington, Illinois. In second place, entry number 69, weighing 929 pounds. VH 8923, Lacey 302, exhibited by Quentin and Andrew Ray of Brooksville, Kentucky. In third place, entry number 74, and also your bread and owned winner, weighing 910 pounds, MML Dolly P, exhibited by Morgan and Mason Love of Baltimore, Ohio. In fourth place, entry number 66, Corey Stumpf. In fifth place, entry number 65, Sage Lawrence. Sixth place, entry number 67, Kyra Sayer. And in seventh place, entry... What a nice division. Let's start by giving these Shorthorn Plus exhibitors a nice round of applause. A good set of calves out here. I still don't think I'm going to go through them, but, but I think you've got options out here. And then the heifer up front, just a, kind of an overview, I just wish she had her brain connected to that show halter today. She's just fighting too much out here, and, and that's an awfully good heifer. She won that class really, really handily in that April division and, and comes out here and Right now, if that heifer just stays like that, that heifer's in contention. Like the heifer behind her, uh, just really, really a, a nice way to start that class as well. That was a good couple of classes back to back. This heifer at times can get that right front leg towed out ever so slightly. That's probably the one thing I come to her and criticize her about because she's got an awfully set of good pieces to her. Gentleman does a nice job with this heifer. That was a, a good pair of heifers uh, in that uh, start to our March division. Uh, this female is really alert, up-headed. A uh, young man does a nice job getting her shown. And then the heifer that concludes the class kind of comes out here. That was one of the, maybe the, the challenging classes of trying to find that one that needed to win. Nice heifer, but I don't know that she's probably the caliber of the three calves in front of her. I'm just going to take a quick look again, show you a couple that I like. Second call, class 10 Herefords. Second call, class 10 Herefords. This is your second call, class 14 Shorthorns. Second call, class 14 Shorthorns.
And your early spring heifer calf champion goes to entry number tw goes to entry number twenty four CF Dream Only four seventy three exhibited by Lindsay Jester of Moreland, Indiana. Congratulations! And your reserve early spring heifer calf champion goes to entry number fifteen. CF Mona Lisa 3953 FER exhibited by Tyler Doss of Terman, Ohio. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We're now ready for Class 12 Junior Heifer Calves over in your Shorthorn Plus female show. Again, we are ready for Class 12 Junior Heifer Calves. These heifers' date of birth range from February 27th through February 26th of 2023. Again, now entering the ring is Class 12 Junior Heifer Cavs in your Shorthorn Plus show. Third and final call, class 14, Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 14, Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 10, Herefords. Third and final call, class 10, Herefords. We start off with the heifer. I think when she first walked through that gate down there, she's one that grabbed my attention. She's one that's super complete, super well balanced. You love that about her. You love the freshness that that one has at this stage of the game. But I think her structural integrity is just about as good as anything we've seen so far today. When you get that one out and on the motion, uh, that's one that her joint work re works really well. Uh, it's one that's good at the ground in terms of her foot shape and size. That's a very high quality heifer. Pretty easy class winner out here for me. It gets to be a little closer down here between second and third. Uh, when this young lady gets this one parked and gives you a look, that's a heifer that's got a lot of good things to her. Like Kyle said a minute ago on a shorehorn over there that uh, her head's just not quite into it today and it needs to be attached to that show halter, but uh, I think that's one that's got a really bright future in front of her. She just needs to act like a show heifer to get her on up within this class. The next one coming out, extremely broody, cowy individual this young man's brought 
it out here. A little chunkier and plainer through that front one third than what the two are in front of her, but that's one I think's got a lot of shape, got a lot of dimension to her, got that nice little brood cow look to her. The young man's got a nice project for on down the road. The next heifer coming out, it's definitely got some wild pieces to her, but that's just it. She's a little piecey. She's one that gets a little tighter in her four ribs. She gets a little deeper in her chest. Really extended, though, in that neck design. You like the hip shape and the power that this one brings to the table. I just like to hook her up and make her a little bit more complete, make her a little better balanced kind of package to get her up any higher. The young man coming out next with a heifer, super complete individual. She's one I like to change a little bit there in that neck shoulder junction. She wants to get a little you necked when you're fewer from the side, but that's a heifer that's got a lot of cow power for that young man to take home and do some good things with. Another heifer with plenty of eye appeal and a really nice kind of heifer coming out in the next hole. Just need to give that one a shot more power and punch to get her up any higher within this class. And then we're rounding out with three heifers that I just like to change the way they're made. Uh, we got one coming out here next that's a little full in her overall uh, <clears throat> fill the day out here. It gets a little narrow in that pen set. I'd like to change that about her. The next two just need to balance up a little better. Thank you. Nice trio of heifers in your plus show. Really an exquisite heifer up here to lead off. Uh, nicer size, that's, that's an off. I'm not going to tell you the heifer in seconds too much for me out here. Uh, this heifer is just probably a little more appropriate, uh, more moderate, but really got a beautiful head and neck design on her, the angle and slope to her shoulder. I could level that rump ever so slightly and set that tail head down uh, just a little neater uh, in that back one third, but you get that heifer out motoring today. That's a long strided female uh, heifer with a lot of rib and depth of body body tour and depth of muscle nice way to lead off this class. This heifer I like probably better on the stand than out on the move. Out on the move she starts to look a little bit shorter necked and she is compared to the heifer that wins the class plainer headed but that's a lot of female. That's a lot of good uh, from the back side of her shoulder back in terms of center rib in terms of muscle shape from behind and still a good solid hind leg when you stop her and get her head up uh, that's a cow in the making and I think one that you can do a lot of things with down the road. Nice pair of heifers there in first and second. Red and white female to come out in third, just kind of not a big class, but she comes out with a couple of heavy hitters out here. This heifer just struggles a little bit out on the move. She's tied her hinged out through her rump, kind of reflects the way that hind leg sets down underneath her, just not quite the flexibility down in that hock and pasture and joint, but a young lady does a nice job getting her set up. Nice balance down that top line, how she ties in and lays in at the front side of her shoulder. Plenty of maternal and quality there. Going to have better days ahead of her. Nice trio of cattle. First call, Class 11 Herefords. First call, Class 11 Herefords. And placings over in Class 12 in your Shorthorn Plus female show are as followed. First place goes to entry number 45, weighing 795 pounds, MFS Mona Bow 18L, exhibited by Canada Brogdon of Wichita, Texas. And second place in that class, weighing 952, goes to entry number 46, Bratcher, Bratcher Myrtle Bow 237, exhibited by Abby Bratcher of Elizabeth, Indiana. And third place in that class, weighing 702 pounds, goes to entry number 44, J.F. Mona Lisa 2308, exhibited by Ruby McClure of Cottage Grove, Tennessee. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Now entering the ring over in your Junior Shorthorn Plus female show is class 13 junior heifer calves. These heifers' date of birth range from February 12th through February 1st, 2023. Again, now entering the ring is class 13, junior heifer calves. First call, class 17, short horns. First call, class 17. 
we get back out here for your junior heifer calf champion over here. And I think we've got three class winners that just put everything together for me in terms of cattle that I like, uh, shape and dimension, but yet still give you a killer look from the side. Uh, you get out here and you analyze them, though. I think there's one in particular that just puts everything together in the best package for me today. And uh, it's going to be uh, easy for me to go out here and pick my champion, follow up with a very, very close uh, reserve. But let's give these kids a round of applause for an awesome set of females they brought out so far today. Results of class number eight of your junior Hereford show in first place entry number 83, weighing 860 pounds, CWCC Merlot 3033, exhibited by Grant Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. In second place, entry number 82, weighing 850, Hawk Maria, 1L, exhibited by Delaney Chester of Oregonia, Ohio. In third place, entry number 84, weighing 942 pounds, DCF 1302 Addy, exhibited by Hunter Smith of Pell City, Alabama. In fourth place, entry number 80, Hunter Smith. In fifth place, entry number 78, Colby Prophet. In sixth place, entry number 77, Bo Todd. In seventh place, entry number 76, Caitlin Keith. In eighth place, entry number 75, Sophia Taylor. And in ninth place, entry number 81, McCandle Freeman. Back out here for your champion, Brad Known. I think there was one heifer that came out of an extremely tough class and a very well-made individual. That's going to be the young lady right here for your calf champion in the Brad Known Show. I would like to take this time to introduce your judge over in your Shorthorn Plus Junior Female Show, Mr. Kyle Galuli. Kyle is the manager of CES Presidented Cattle, a purebred Angus and Hereford operation in Wadley, Georgia. A native of Indiana, Kyle is a 2002 graduate of Purdue University and was a member of the livestock judging team, growing up showing both Angus and Hereford cattle. He met his wife, Jennifer, and they have two children, Grant and Diana Kate. Kyle is a past president of the Georgia Cattlemen's Association, and he has judged over 20, judged in 25 states as well as Canada. If you could join me in giving Mr. Kyle Galuli a round of applause for being here with us today. Results of your Junior Hereford show. Your champion, Junior Hereford Calf, goes to entry number 62, VH756, Lexi 303, exhibited by Stormy Swaim of Rockville, Indiana. Your reserve champion, Junior Hereford Calf, goes to entry number 71, Hawk Rainey 6L, exhibited by Nolan Lee of Wellington, Illinois. Now exhibiting in the Hereford ring is class number nine. Second call, class 11, Hereford. Females, your second call, class 11, Hereford. Second call, class 17, Shorthorn. Second call, class 17, Shorthorn.
another nice class as we get into a new division and um, Sefer that leads off just kind of handles herself very well out here and dominates this class more or less. This Sefer is just maternal, this Sefer is sound, this Sefer has got the right pieces in terms of rib and depth of body depth of muscle and expression of muscle. Ed Heffer just uh, puts a lot of good things together from the ground up and rear forward, or if you want to start from the front and go to the back. Uh, she's a heifer that looks like a female. Uh, I love her as a show heifer, and I'm not convinced you're probably going to like her even more two, three years down the road. The heifer in second, I think most closely follows from a tight perspective, uh, more elegant up through her front end in relation to the red heifer that follows her. Uh, she's just more ladylike through that front end and how she's laid in at her shoulder and transitions nice into her fore rib. There's not a, a lot to that heifer in regards to as you compare to the heifers on either side of her. She gets a little flatter through her upper skeleton, a little flatter muscled from behind, but I think she handles herself better uh, off of those rear two than the young man's red heifer in third. I think if this heifer was a little prettier headed and necked and probably kind of set those hind legs down more square underneath her, she could probably go up into second. She's thicker ended, she's bolder ribbed, she's got more substance to her all the way through. That heifer just gets a little plainer up front, a little crest to her neck, but more importantly from behind, those hind legs want to maybe bow. I don't know that they bow out, but they taper down where those uh, back feet come together. Roan heifer to come into fourth is a heck of a female, a little more size if you need that growth and, and length. Uh, the fit job under, underneath that underline probably I, is not for me. Uh, I, I just like to see cattle in their natural state. I know this is a beauty contest for cattle, but I probably don't need all that excess on her underline. Uh, but that heifer uh, in her hind leg and her tail head concern me. She kind of gets upright in that tail head and then that hind leg is the same way. It's just kind of straight up and down and she shuffles as she travels. But that heifer is loaded with a lot of length of skeleton today and, and uh, growth. Heifer behind her, just kind of an, a different made female, plainer made up in her head and neck, shorter necked, a little rounder out through her rump but I love the body of that female, the center rib, the depth from her, and uniformity from her elbow back to her flank, just a nice solid cow make female. Uh, then the red heifer to conclude the class, young man does a nice job with. She doesn't want to get that head up the best in the world, uh, but that's a female that uh, just kind of gets a little narrower from behind and it comes into a, a heated class with those top pair of heifers up ahead of her today, but nice class of cattle, especially the heifer that leads off. Third and final call, Class 11, Herefords. Third and final call, Class 11, Herefords. Your third and final call, Class 17, Shorthorns. Third and final call, Class 17. And placings over in your Junior Shorthorn Plus show are as follows. First place in Class 13, weighing 946 pounds, goes to inch number 55, CF Max Rosa 332 Primo, exhibited by Grady McGrew of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And second place in Class 13, weighing 807, goes to entry number 51, GSL Mona Lisa for 415, exhibited by Garrett Lou Allen of Adamsville, Ohio. And third place in class 13 goes to entry number 15, weighing 806 pounds, FF Golden Girl 3L, exhibited by Mason Fuller of Rennes Fair, Indiana. And fourth place in class 13 goes to entry number 50, WTB Crystal Revelation, exhibited by Wyatt Beckley of Heath, Ohio. And fifth place in class 13 goes to entry number 56, KNEP Special Rosa FSF, exhibited by Haley Nelson of Claypool, Indiana. And sixth place in that class goes to entry number 54, Miss Perfect Coral BW, exhibited by Weston Weiner of Hanover, Indiana. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. Now in the ring is class 14 junior heifer calves over in your Shorthorn Plus female show. These heifers' date of birth range from January 25th through January 4th, 2023. 
Out here in this December heifer calf class, uh, I guess when I sit back and I analyze these things, there's one that comes to the top in just terms of not having a hole in her. She's good at the ground, all four feet point in the direction that they need to. She's good in her foot shape, extremely sound when you set her into motion, but yet she's fresh and feminine through that front one third. I like that about her, but still has a tremendous amount of shape and dimension to that rib cage. One with plenty of punch when you get in behind her from pin to pin and up through all the way into her back. That's one with some meat and some muscle. The cool one standing still is the one here in second. But when you get to analyzing this heifer front, out of her front end, she wants to toe out really bad off them two. Uh, I'd like to just square her up there at the ground, and I think it'd be a game changer for this female. But she just toes out too much for me to get her to the top of this class. But I love the look that that one offers, the shape and the dimension. That's one that's just been awesomely presented out here. Young lady does a really nice job showing just like square her up off that front end. The next heifer coming out is kind of the problem heifer for me in this class. She's one that I just read is uh, a little burlier through that neck, a little crestier neck, a little deeper in that chest than I would like to see at this stage of the game. She's one that's a little straighter in her knee, a little more upright in her shoulder compared to the two in front of her, but a heifer that's got plenty of power and looks really nice out here in terms of presentation. The next heifer coming out, like standing still, you like this heifer. You set her into motion. She wants to get that tail head up there in the air and drop down in her loin, but that's a heifer that's got a lot of nice things to her. The young lady's going to make a nice cow out of that one on down the road. The next heifer coming out is one that's just not quite as balanced up as nice as the ones in front of her. A little plainer through that front one third. I'd like to open that one up and make it a little wider in her pin set. The next two heifers coming out just don't have that overall eye appeal that I'm looking for within this class. First call, class 18, Shorthorns. First call, class 18, Shorthorns. Results of your Junior Hereford show in first place, entry number 91, weighing 1,007 pounds, TR 1856, Fay, exhibited by Gage Kramer of Waxahachie, Texas. In second place, weighing 950 pounds, entry number 89, MAV Cotton's Vivian, 291K, exhibited by Grant Addison and Conley Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. In third place, weighing 1,079 pounds, entry number 90, KLL Elman Tula, 22K, exhibited by Suter Clark of Gretna, Virginia. In fourth place, entry number 86, and also your bred and owned winner for the class, was exhibited by Libby Rushton of Waverly, Tennessee. In fifth place, entry number 87, Lauren Wingler. In sixth place, entry number 88, Nora Cave. And in seventh place, entry number 85, Sam Jennings. First call, class 12, Herefords. Your first call, class number 12, Herefords. Hereford entry number 107 to the makeup arena. Hereford entry number 107. This is your last call. Second call, class 12, Hereford females. Second call, class 12, Hereford females. Second call, class 18, Shorthorns. Second call, class 18, Shorthorns.
We would like to invite you here again in Louisville, Kentucky for the 50th anniversary of the North American International Livestock Exposition. 50 years ago in November of 1974, the show ring gates were open for the first time here at the North American. We invite you to celebrate this milestone and look back with us. Please visit the display of highlights from the Expo's history in the Herald Workmen North Wing Lobby and enjoy video stories especially created for the event on television and event screens around the Kentucky Exposition Center. We invite you to share your memories of the North American International Livestock Exposition with us. Please visit livestockexpo.org slash memories to share. Thank you for being a part of history at the 50th Annual North American International Livestock Exposition. This is your third and final call, Class 12 Herefords. Third and final call, Class 12 Herefords. Third and final call, class 18, Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 18, Shorthorns. We do appreciate our national Lassie Queen, Miss McKenna Giesman. We appreciate her being here as well as your alternate Lassie Queen, Miss Maggie Bass. We do appreciate those gals being here with us today as well as Victoria Thompson, your Alabama State Lassie Queen, as well as Lisa Chamberlain, your Minnesota Lassie Queen. We do appreciate those ladies being here, helping out in the ring at your Shorthorn Plus female show.
Lucindy over here at the backdrop ruined me. She told me I was doing really good on time, and then this class walks in the ring, and so I apologize. But you, you bring two or three heifers out here of this caliber, and uh, they're different. I wish I could just say it's, it's close because they're exactly alike, but they're just different enough uh, that I could take both of them home and probably breed them differently and, and make really good use out of them. I'm going to leave them as they stand. Uh, this heifer up front is just too powerful for me today to get around. Um, this heifer from the ground up, she's good footed. She's not acting the best in the world. I, if she was acting a little bit better, I'd say she'd probably come out here and just, I wouldn't be making this comparison right now. That heifer is really good in terms of her body and her depth and her shape from behind. You could freshen her up maybe ever so slightly, uh, but that's just a really good female from structure and femininity and power all tied into one. I'm not convinced that down the road when you make these things into cows that this probably long term will be more my type here in second. Uh, down in the southeast where I'm at, I probably don't need one with that much hair, with that much power, but this is the kind that I can probably put to use in Georgia on a lot of days. She's super sound. She hits her stride so well. That's where I almost started this class with her, is she never really misses her beat in terms of structure. Is she a, as powerful from behind? No. You're going to give that advantage to really the heifers on either side of her today, but this heifer has got such a neat maternal look up in her head and her neck and where she ties in at the front side of her shoulder, blends really good and strength in that shoulder top junction and carries that all the way back. Again, I could just make her just a little more powerful out through that pin set today. The heifer in third is a, an, another really good cowie female. Depth of body and boldness to her rib shape and still really maternal and cowie up in her head and neck design. Out through her tail head today, her rump structure isn't quite as on point as the two heifers ahead of her, where that tail head kind of sits in relation to where her pin bone set is. But I love that uh, hind leg, her stifle to her hock to her pasture just moves without effort today. That is a really good trio of females. Heifer in fourth just kind of hits a buzzsaw class with that top trio. This heifer is very fault free. Really uniform from her fore rib back, really good out through her hip and hind leg. There's just not enough to her. She's flatter through her upper skeleton today, but a really sound female. Heifer behind her, one of the more powerful ones, probably more like the heifer up front today in terms of shape and power, but she's a heifer with her bone work, gets coarser in her joint structure, she gets more awkward from her hock into her pasture, she gets more rigid in that pasture today, just need to loosen her up and flatten her up in her joints. Uh, red roan heifer, more of a moderate conventional female. Is she sound enough? Is she good enough in terms of her movement? Absolutely. She's a female with some depth and some muscle to her. Just like to make her longer body, you could bring her up a frame score to be more competitive with those ahead of her. And then the uh, black roan heifer here to conclude the class. Longer bodied, more frame and more growth. She just gets more upright off both ends of her skeleton to get any higher in this class. Really outstanding set of fallborn heifers here. Uh, we start off with one that's uh, pretty loudly marked, but I'll tell you what, when you sit back and you analyze that one in terms of power and shape down that top and a big old wolfy hip in her and, and really good at the ground and gets out and goes around the ring, I think that's a very high quality heifer that comes to the top of this class. Really, really easy for me. This young lady does an awesome job of getting that one stuck out here. Young man's heifer coming out next. Not the biggest heifer in this class, but definitely super complete. You love the balance that that one has. I'd like to give her just a little bit more fore rib to run with that one in front of her, but young man does an awesome job of getting a really nice, fresh yearling female there showed within this class. The next heifer coming out, she's carrying a little more condition through that front one-third than what the two in front of her are, but a very high quality female. I'd just like to change that one when you set her into motion. She wants to walk a little bit outside herself, struggle just a little bit as she goes away from you. Now the sound athletic one in the class, this young man's coming out with next and uh, I commend that kid for sticking with her because she does like to get out and walk around the ring. I'd just like to make that one a little deeper and a little cowier at this stage of the game but the young man stuck with her and got her showed and did a really good job out here. The next one a very broody kind of female but when you set that one into motion she wants to get up in her spine and kind of drop down in her pins and that's what puts her into that place within this class. The next heifer coming out I want a heifer that's got some chest in her but that's a heifer that's got a lot of good things to her. Extremely 
family sound. I'd like to open that one up a little bit in her four ribs. She wants to get a little too tight there for me today. Next heifer coming out is one that's kind of at a disadvantage on paper, but a heifer that's got a lot of good to her. Just like to set that one down and free her up a little bit when you get her out and get her going. The next three heifers, nice kind of heifers within this class, just need a little bit more eye appeal and wow factor for me. First call, Class 13, Herefords. Your first call, Class 13, Herefords. This is also your first call, Class 21, Shorthorns. First call, Class 21, Shorthorns. And placings over in Class 14, a Junior Heifer Cavs in your Shorthorn Plus show are as followed. First place, Weighing 1,001 pounds, goes to entry number 58, CT Cold Dream of Me 3011, exhibited by Whitney Swam of Rockville, Indiana. Second place, weighing 934 pounds, goes to entry number 62, AGRF Lady May 169L, exhibited by Emily Kramer of Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania. Third place, weighing 914 pounds, goes to entry number 63, CF Free. Fitz Crystal Swan, 39 ET, exhibited by Samantha Van Horse of Bowling Green, Ohio. Fourth place in that class goes to entry number 57, JRLDB Melissa Arstrid, exhibited by Gentry Remy of Oswald, Oklahoma. And fifth place in that class goes to entry number 61, CSF Cumberland, 24K, exhibited by Cameron Blue of Greenfield, Indiana. Sixth place in that class goes to entry number 60, HSE Miss Caroline, exhibited by Emma Hesslinger of West Manchester, Ohio. And please note, entry number 59 is a scratch. Again, we are now ready to select your junior heifer calf champion. And Kyle, the mic is all yours. Again, again, a nice division. Let's congratulate these exhibitors on a heck of a, a set of classes out here, and we're just halfway down the road. Uh, you bring this quality out in this division, and, and I think, again, you can go a couple of different ways and justify it. Uh, I think probably the three heifers uh, that it comes down to uh, would be the, the heifer from our class two. Uh, just a really cowy female, so sound. Uh, as I said in class, I think her best days are going to be as a cow. I think she's a heck of a show heifer, uh, but she just looks like a maternal uh, made female that uh, productivity, if all the reproduction parts uh, work with her, she's got the phenotype uh, to make it happen. This was a really good class, as I talked about, and, and took some time with, because I think you just had enough differences between those top trios that uh, you bring these two heifers out. And again, they're not exactly alike, uh, but because of their structure, but because of their quality from a femininity standpoint, they've got to go together. And then you make the call on what you need in terms of, of power and shape. And to mention this heifer is so stout, so uh, dimensional when you get around behind these cattle. She's probably in a little different league than those other two heifers that was second uh, behind her and then the heifer directly in front of her. I'm going to use her and get her on out of the way. Congratulations to that heifer. And we'll bring that other one around and take another look. Results of class 10 of your junior Hereford show in first place, entry number 94, weighing 1,117 pounds, Hawk Mona, 2208, exhibited by Ella Brooks of Prophetstown, Illinois. In second place, entry number 101, and also your bred and owned winner, weighing 1,048 pounds, goes to Womack Redneck Lady, 2307, exhibited by Levi Womack of Pembroke, Kentucky. In third place, entry number 103, weighing 1,111 pounds, Goes to MTM FRC 7S, exhibited by Naomi 231, exhibited by Amberlyn Christianberry of Star, South Carolina. In fourth place, entry number 93, Braxton Carper. In fifth place, entry number 99, Kendra Otto. In sixth place, entry number 102, exhibited by Delaney Chester. 
Seventh place, entry number 98, Harper Rose Starnes. In eighth place, entry number 96, exhibited by Garrett and Scott Hickey. In ninth place, entry number 95, Bailey and Shelby Pearl. And in tenth place, entry number 97, Hunter Smith. Nice class of Fallborns here. Uh, we're going to start off with one that I think is just sensible in her size and really ideal in her condition out here within this class. Uh, I like the cleanness of her chest floor that she has, but yet still has some shape and dimension down that top and some rib cage to her. I think that's a nice, complete heifer, pretty easy place for me to start within this class. The next heifer I like, a lot of things about this one, just need to freshen that one up. She's a little deep there in her chest, a little plainer through that front one-third, but a long body bodied heifer with plenty of capacity. Like to tone that tail head down just a little bit when you set her into motion out here, but a very complete heifer there in the second hole. The third place heifer is the fresher one within this class, but she's one that just lacks a little bit in terms of, of shape and dimension to the center part of that body. I'd like to give her a little bit more rib cage there and a little more shape up high to get her up within this class any further. Young man's heifer coming out next, gonna make a nice cow for him. Just need to relax that one in her top when she gets out here and goes around the ring. Second call in class 13, Herford. Second call in class 13, Herfords. This is also your second call, class 21, Shorthorns. Second call, class 21, Shorthorns. And your junior heifer calf champion over in your Shorthorn Plus show goes to entry number 58, S.T. Cole, Dream of Me, 3011, exhibited by Whitney Swan of Rockfield, Indiana. Congratulations. And your reserve junior heifer calf champion goes to entry number 55, C.F. Max Rosa, 332 Primo, exhibited by Grady McGrew of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We're now ready for class 17 winter heifer calves. These heifers date of birth range from December 21st through December 2nd of 2022. Again, now entering the ring is class 17 winter heifer calves. This is your third and final call in class 13 Herefords. Third and final call in class 13 Herefords. First call, class 14. First call, class 14 Herefords. Your Class 11 results of your Junior Hereford Show in first place, entry number 109, weighing 1,021 pounds, VH 2296 Cali, exhibited by Sam Staunton of South Solon, Ohio. In second place, and also your bred and owned winner, weighing 1,133 pounds, goes to HAF 7437 Kirby K, exhibited by Libby Rushton of Waverly, Tennessee. In third place, entry number 108, weighing 1,130 pounds, HPH 103F Livy, exhibited by Caroline Garrell of Petersburg, Tennessee. In fourth place, entry number 111, exhibited by Caitlin and Luke Grisso of Campbellsville, Kentucky. Third and final call in class 21, Shorthorns. Third and final call in class 21, Shorthorns. This is your first call in class 22. First call, class 22, Shorthorns. At this time in the Hereford Show, we'd also like to recognize your national Hereford queen, Miss Marie Prottle of Wisconsin. We'd also like to recognize your National Junior Hereford Association directors, Logan McFactridge, Wesley Denton, Lauren Gates, Hardley Watson, and Kaylee McVale. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for your Hereford royalty as well as your association directors.
Second call, class 14, Herefords. Second call, class 14, Herefords. Really a nice class again in your plus show, not a last place suffer out here. And we got some differences amongst the four. Uh, I think between first and second just comes down to sheer power. A uh, young lady does a nice job with this female. Love her length of body. Uh, from the point of her shoulder back, she's so long and yet so precise down her top. You study the strength that she's got right in that shoulder top junction and maintains that balance all the way back to her pin set. She's got adequate depth, she's got adequate muscle, and then you set her off on the go. That's a really sound female. And the heifer in second that follows her kind of matches uh, her. She's not quite as long, she's not quite as stout from behind, uh, but in terms of shoulder, in terms of joint structure and angle, and ability to get out and travel. That is a super pair of really sound, high quality cattle. A little bit more moderate, conventional in her kind, but certainly very maternal, loads of future ahead of both of those heifers. A little more power and size and performance probably to the red heifer here that's in third. And I like that about her. I think that's probably one that's got ability to go raise a, a herd sire for that young lady down the road because of her substance at the ground and her foot size. Uh, really a nice bone female and still smooth and flat in her joint structure. She doesn't balance up quite as neat from her shoulder forward and then as well down her top line. She gets a little bit tighter in her spine and, and more so back through her rump today. But that's a heifer that I think has got a lot of future ahead of her as well. Fault-free individual to conclude the class. She's up-headed, she's alert, just gets maybe a little plainer headed, a little plainer rump today. That hind leg doesn't probably move out with quite the security down through that hock joint that you see in the trio of heifers ahead of her today, uh, but a very fresh female. It's got some future as well. Nice class of cattle. Nice effort to start off this class with over here in the Hereford ring. Young man's brought one out. Very all petted, very high tying kind of female in terms of the way she ties into that neck shoulder junction. Long spine, good hipped individual, extremely sound when you set her into motion, but really, really fresh out here within this class. Young man does a nice job of getting that one showed. Another fresh, uh, kind of greener kind of heifer here coming out in the second hole, but when you sit back and you analyze that one, just very hard to poke a hole in her. Not the stoutest female we've seen all day, but one in terms of look and balance and eye appeal that falls logically into that second place hole within this class for me. The next heifer coming out has got some power and some dimension to her. A little plainer headed. I'd like to change that head shape on that one. She's a little fatter through that lower third than what I'd like to ideally see, but a nice balanced female there within that third hole. A bigger framed heifer here coming out next. One that's just a little coarser in her joint work. I'd just like to clean her up there to get her up any higher within this class. we got another heifer coming out here that uh, on the go I'd like to change that one the way she sits down off those rear two but a nice little brood cow for that young man and then we've got some heifers coming out here the last three I just need to balance them up give them a little better eye appeal to get them up any higher within this class. And placings over in class 17 over in your Shorthorn Plus show are as followed. First place, Wayne 1102, goes to entry number 68, C.F. Margie 2129, exhibited by Piper Cates of Mondock, Indiana. And second place in that class, Wayne 1061, goes to entry number 67, S.T. Prima Donna 
26-15K exhibited by Kessler Collins of Flanagan, Illinois. And third place in that class goes to entry number 65, weighing 1036, ACRC Hot and Spicy, exhibited by Addison Campbell of Eaton, Ohio. And fourth place, weighing 1192, goes to entry number 66, CNETO Commodity Girl, exhibited by Colton Nelaki of Fairfax, Iowa. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Now in the ring is class 18 senior heifer calves. These heifers range from September 15th through September 12th of 2022. This is your third and final call in class 14 Herefords. Third and final call in class 14 Herefords. This is your first call in class 15. First call, class 15 Herefords. This is your second call in class 22 Shorthorns. Second call, class 22 Shorthorns. Nice pair of heifers here in a September class, and I think it's pretty well cut and dry. The, the heifer up front, the white female, got a little birth weight to her. Uh, I haven't talked numbers all that much, and you've got some differences in that regard, but other uh, everything else, there's not enough significant difference. But just judge these on quality, and this heifer kind of easily wins amongst the pair. Her angle to her shoulder, her strength the top, her quality out through her hip and her hind leg, and then her ability to fill her tracks because of that structural excellence gives her the distinct advantage today. A little prettier up through her front end. The heifer in second, not shorter necked. Uh, you could extend her out from her shoulder forward a little more, just make her a little prettier out on the move today. She just kind of comes right out of that shoulder and there's her head. So, you know, I think she's long enough bodied from there back. I wish her, I wish her neck would follow suit. Much plainer back through her rump today as she got enough shape and power and volume. Absolutely going to be a nice cow prospect. Just got too much to handle with that white heifer. We come back over here for our fall division in the Hereford Show. I think there's a really nice lineup of class winners and their respected seconds out here. I'm not going to go through and talk them all, but I think there's one just in terms of being show ready out here today. Comes to the top within this group for me, and I'll go out here and pick your champion. I'll follow up with another one I think is extremely fresh and got a bright future in her for reserve. So congratulations to these kids. Second call, class 15, Herefords. Second call, class 15, Herefords. This is your first call, class 25, Shorthorns. First call, class 25, Shorthorns. And placings over in class 18 in your Shorthorn Plus show are as followed. First place in class 18, weighing 949 pounds, goes to entry number 71, WCR Bella's Princess 403, exhibited by Shaley Conrad of Dover, Florida. And second place in that class, weighing 1015, goes to entry number 49, Delilah Lily Rose, exhibited by Kirsten West of Amboy, Indiana. Congratulations to those exhibitors. And now we will be selecting your senior heifer calf champion. Again, now in the ring, it will be the selection of your senior heifer calf champion. Results of class 12 of your junior Hereford show in first place entry number 121, weighing 1,270 pounds, Day Jezebel 20F, exhibited by Rent Day of Telford, Tennessee. In second place entry number 123, weighing 1,200 pounds, exhibited name is SCG Lazy Eye Diana 287, exhibited by Adeline Sorgan of Convoy, Ohio. In third place, entry number 126, weighing 1,074 pounds, Purple HB Betsy 129K, exhibited by Haley Ferguson of Windsor, Missouri. In fourth place, entry number 128, Riley Hines. In fifth place, Entry number 114, and also your bred and owned class winner, goes to Ryan Douglas Underwood of Campbellsville, Kentucky. You're in sixth place. Entry number 127, William and Lucy Kane Sexton. In seventh place, entry number 119, Allison and Emily Reeves. And in eighth place, entry number 120, exhibited by Ryan Douglas Underwood. Well, back out of here for your champion, Hereford bred and owned. I think it's... Uh, quite nicely that these kids can bring out such a high quality set of heifers i'm gonna go out here and pick your champion within this fall division that's gonna be the young man here in the black cowboy hat
over here in your Shorthorn and Plus show, another nice division, one of the smaller ones of the day, and it typically is uh, amongst breeds, but uh, boy, the, this uh, group of heifers is really, really good. This white heifer is a nice female, very fault-free and very sound, and, and kind of comes out and, and grabs your attention, uh, kind of the uh, the white uh, heifer of the three, but uh, she's got a lot to contend with. I think this pair of heifers that was up ahead of us, uh, I could stick this showman in my pocket and take her home. She does an outstanding job. She's going to have your champion, and that's an awfully good heifer that came out behind her uh, in second in that class, and I'll keep those two together for reserve. Very nice uh, pair of heifers. Let's congratulate all four exhibitors. Third and final call, Class 15 nice Herefords. Guy. Third and final call, Class 15 nice Herefords. This is your second call, Class 25 Shorthorns. Second call, Class 25 Shorthorns. And your senior heifer calf champion goes to entry number 68, CF Margie 2129 CTP, exhibited by Piper Cates of Montauk, Indiana. Congratulations. Your reserve senior heifer calf champion goes to entry number 67, ST Prima Donna 2615, exhibited by Kessler Collins of Flanagan, Illinois. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We're now ready for class 21 summer yearling females. Congratulations to your champion senior Hereford camp of your junior Hereford show goes to entry number 94, Hawk Mona 2208, exhibited by Ella Brooks of Prophetstown, Illinois. Your reserve champion senior Hereford camp goes to entry number 91, TR 1816 Fay, exhibited by Gage Creamer of Wackahaxie, Texas. Your bred and owned champion senior Hereford camp goes to entry number 101, Womack Redneck Lady 2307, exhibited by Levi Womack of Pembroke, Kentucky. Now in the ring over in your Shorthorn Plus female show is class 21 summer yearling females. This female's date of birth is July 3rd of 2022. Third and final call, class 25, Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 25, Shorthorns. This is your first call, class 26, Shorthorns. First call, class 26. Just a single entry here in your Shorthorn show. I Heifer that uh, summer heifer, just really stout and powerful from the ground up. She's big footed, she's big boned, she's thick ended. Maybe a little bit to, uh, too much for me in that regard. Uh, and I say that, and that heifer's probably uh, could produce some show steers for you. When you put that much substance into one and dimension, uh, she's got a little shoulder to her to go with that joint structure today. So from a maternal standpoint, I sure could make her a little more appealing to me, uh, but from the standpoint of substance and bone and dimension, she's one that can add a lot of value to the Shorthorn Plus program. So congratulations, young man, on a nice single entry. And first place in class 21, Wayne 1276, goes to entry number 72, NFS Rosemary 703, exhibited by Corbin Herber of Minden, Ohio. Congratulations. Now in the ring is class 22, late spring yearling females over in your Shorthorn Plus junior female show. 
These heifers date of birth range from June 2nd through May 2nd of 2022. Again, now in the ring is class 22, late spring yearling females. Get into these July and June born females, and we've got a class of heifers that are definitely not lacking in terms of power from top to bottom. But uh, we start off with one I think is just the most complete, most well balanced one. Is she the freshest? No. But in terms of quality, I think she comes to the top quite handily for me, and that's going to be your class winner. Just in terms of the overall shape and dimension that that female has from one end to the other, you like the rib cage that that one has in her. Good footed, good in her structure, just a nice, powerful female to start off the class with. One that coming out here in the next hole, a little plainer in terms of her head, but that's one that's got a lot of good things to her in terms of length of body and squareness of hip. Just like to make that one a little softer in terms of when you get her uh, on the side view profile on the center portion of her rib, but just a nice female there to come out in the second hole. The next heifer is another one of those carrying a little bit more condition for me than what I'd like to ideally see at this stage, but one that's got some power and some shape. Just needs to be a little better there in that tail head as you get her out and get her going on the move. Another heifer coming at you, definitely one with some power and some shape. She gets a little bolder through that shoulder than what I'd like to see. I'd like to see her a little softer at the ground as she goes away from you on the rear too. But if you're in the muscle, that's one that's definitely got it. The young man coming out here, rounding out next as a heifer that's got a lot of good things to her. It's just a shame she had to fall in within this class. She just lacks a little bit of the overall power and mass and shape the ones in front of her have today. Results of Class 13 of your Junior Hereford Show in first place entry number 135, weighing 1,340 pounds, MAV Cotton's Elvira 264K, exhibited by Addison Ward of Oak Grove, Missouri. In second place, entry number 130, and also your bred and owned class winner, weighing 1,345 pounds, goes to EF Zoe 30K, exhibited by Bailey and Shelby Pearl of Duquesne, Illinois. In third place, entry number 132, weighing 1,326 pounds, HAF 7437 Cassidy, owned and exhibited by Libby Rushton of Waverly, Tennessee. In fourth place, entry number 134, Laney Har. In fifth place, entry number 133, Colby Prophet. Entry number 81 and 87 Shorthorns to the Makeup Arena. Entries number 81 and 87 Shorthorns to the Makeup Arena. This is the first call in class 16. Hereford females, first call in class 16 Herefords. Nice trio here in your late spring class and your Shorthorn Plus show. I think you can justify probably either heifer here in first and second. Maybe just a little fresher female here that wins. Love the depth, love the length of body that she's got. I don't know that she's probably as maternal looking up through that head and neck for me as this uh, heifer in second. Uh, but from her point of her shoulder back, that heifer's just got way too much in terms of the length, the pounds that she's going to put over that skeleton because of it and still moves well enough. She can maybe roll in on those front feet just ever so slightly. That's just me observing more than criticizing because I don't think it's an issue with her. The heifer in second, like I said, in terms of maybe composition, maybe isn't quite as on point as that heifer right in front of her today. Her hind leg isn't quite as accurate. I think that's probably what gets me. I think I'd probably put the front end of her on that one and probably put the hind leg on that one on this heifer, and I think then you've got a really close pair. But this heifer, once you set her off into motion, I think it's a better moving hind leg than it is a better formed hind leg, but still really strong in her top. Love the depth of rib that she's got. Not quite the length of body either that you see in the heifers really on either side of her. This heifer's probably even a touch longer sided too. Is she as precise in her movement? No, and I think that's just because she's a little coarser in her joint structure. She's a little tighter in her pasture. She's a little rounder in her shoulder. So I'd just like to maybe see her move off just a little neater today. 
make her more attractive in her neck shoulder junction and build her up a little stronger in that top line today from a balance standpoint. But I get around behind these heifers and I love the muscle pattern that heifer's got to her. She's one that can go raise you a herd bull down the road too. Nice trio of cattle. Second call, class 16 Herefords, your second call, class 16 Herefords. Is your second call, class 26 Shorthorns, second call, class 26. And placings in class number 22 over in your Shorthorn Plus show are as followed. First place goes to entry number 78, Wayne, 1409 PRES, who's right, 269K, Exhibited by Bell Barnett from Knox, Indiana. And second place in class 22, Wayne 1306 goes to entry number 75. TSSC Country Queen 2140K, exhibited by Haley Stroller of Slainsville, West Virginia. And third place, Wayne 1216 goes to entry number 73, uh, Painter Sweet Love K31, exhibited by Riley Closer of Herbon, Ohio. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Now in the ring will be the selection of your intermediate champion female over in your Shorthorn Plus female show. Third and final call, class 16 Herefords. Third and final call, class 16 Herefords. Third and final call, class 26 Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 26. Well, again, not a big division over here on your Shorthorn side, but a good one uh, still nonetheless. The Red Roan Heifer from our single class, like I described uh, in that class, big bone, thick-ended, just got a lot to her in terms of pounds, and she's going to possess that uh, pounds and advantage in terms of bone work and pass that on down, but yet it concerns me a little bit, probably find a bull that's going to refine her a little bit, make her a little smoother shouldered and smoother jointed, and I think you'll uh, come out with some offspring right where you need it. I think the pair that you got to keep together are two from their last class. These two solid black females offer just a lot of, of quality, and, and they're not exactly exactly alike. Like I said, you could change this one maybe up front down in that neck and brisket for me today like the heifer that's behind her and likewise with the hind leg. I think this heifer moves a little bit truer and neater off of that uh, uh, hind leg than the heifer that follows in second. But I'll keep those two together today. Congratulations to both those young ladies. Well, a tremendous pair of heifers here at the top of this class. I think there's two of them that uh, when you sit back and you analyze them, you got to like a lot of things about them. They're different, they're type and kind, but yet they're both very, very high quality. Uh, you get out and you look at this first place heifer, and I think she just screams brood cow. She's fresh enough in her appearance. She's sound as a cat. When you set her into motion out here on a big foot, good and flexible in her joint work, uh, presented to the max out here today, that young man's brought a really good one out here to win that class congratulations to him the heifer here in the second hole is kind of a little disadvantage in terms of on paper uh, you know and non-compliant they don't have a EPD set on here but that's one that I think in terms of just phenotype has a lot of good things about her not quite as deep in her flank as what our class winner is doesn't give you that overall brood cow look but definitely gives you that show heifer eye appeal uh, through that front one third you love that about her I'd just like to soften her up a little bit in her flank there to compete with that one in front of her but a really high quality heifer young man does an awesome job with young ladies heifer coming out here in the next hole she's one that's pretty high on the birth weight category when you look there at the numbers but that's a heifer extremely fresh good in her shoulder design good in her extension through that front one third just like to give that one a little bit more rib to get her up any higher within this class a very sensible heifer here coming out in the next hole very complete uh, it's just a heifer that doesn't have any of the wow factors to her you just like to give her a little bit more look through that front one third clean her up there in that chest floor but that's one that's going to be a very productive cow for that young lady on down the road another heifer that's got a really good look to her you like that heifer in terms of all the the shape and the dimension that that one has just a nice kind of female needs to be cleaned up there in the chest floor too another one coming out a little more modern or type and kind maybe you read that one as being a little rounder off of both ends just needs to be freshened up And over in your Shorthorn Plus sign, your intermediate champion goes to entry number 78. Press Who's Right, 269K, exhibited by Bell 
Bennett of Knox, Indiana. And your reserve intermediate champion goes to entry number 75, TSSC Country Queen, 2140K, exhibited by Haley Stroller of Slainsville, West Virginia. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Now in the ring is class 25 early spring at yearling females. Again, now in the ring is class 25 early spring yearling females over in your Shorthorn Plus female show. These heifers' date of birth range from April, April 30th through April 3rd of 2022. Results of class 14 of your Junior Hereford Show in first place entry number 138, weighing 1,420 pounds, HJM Scarlet KO4, exhibited by Finley and Hudson Myers of Edmond, Oklahoma. In second place, entry number 139, weighing 1,386 pounds, KNAP Donna's AC, exhibited by Caleb Lichter of Napanee, Indiana. In third place, entry number 143, weighing 1,404 pounds, HPH 103F Lauren, exhibited by Harper Rose Starnes of Fort Payne, Alabama. In fourth place, entry number 141, Harley Wren Watson. And in fifth place, entry number 142, exhibited by McKenna Austin Tessa Smith of Hubertus, Wisconsin. Back out here for you, intermediate uh, female. I think there's two really nice class winners and two very good respected seconds, but I think there's a pair of heifers out here that were in class together that were awful tough, and they're going to be hard for me to separate. I'm going to go ahead and keep them together as your champion in reserve. First call, class 17, Hereford females. First call, class 17, Herefords. First call, class 29, Shorthorns. First call, class 29, Shorthorns. Congratulations to your champion, intermediate, yearling female of your junior Hereford show. Goes to entry number 138, HJM Scarlet, KO4, exhibited by Kinley and Hudson Myers of Edmond, Oklahoma. Your reserve champion, intermediate, yearling female, goes to entry number 139, KNEP Donna's AC, exhibited by Caleb Lickler of Napanee, Indiana. We'd also like to recognize your champion intermediate yearling female of your bread known division goes to entry number 130, BPSPEF Zoe 30K, exhibited by Bailey and Shelby Pearl of Duquesne, Illinois. Now entering the ring is class number 15 of your junior Herefords. 
This is your second call, class number 17. Second call, class 17, Herefords. Third and final call, class 17, Herefords. Third and final call, class 17, Herefords. Third and final call, class 29, Shorthorns. Third and final call, class 29, Shorthorns. This is your first call, class 30, Shorthorns. First call, class 30.
A nice top trio of heifers out here in your shorthorn plus show and three different females. The, the heifer up front uh, may be more my kind up through her head or neck or shoulder. I could change her a bit compositionally as you get around behind her and freshen her up just, just a little bit better today, but, but that heifer's just too feminine for me and too correct in her shoulder. But I think what really grabs me is when she's out on the move. I think that's when she separates herself out here because of her flexibility and freedom. Now, if I'm going to change her maybe more than anything, I'd, I'd like to give her more depth of heel uh, to walk out on. She's got a pretty good foot underneath her. Just wish there was a little more foundation, a little more depth of heel on that backside of that rear foot. Red Heifer in second gives her a, a run for her money out here because that's a really powerful one. From the point of her shoulder back, that's as powerful a one that you can make and still put a quality uh, structure at the ground. She's bigger footed, she's deeper heeled, uh, she's just a really good female. She doesn't probably move out with quite the flex and, and just freedom that you see in that heifer that wins, uh, but I think a heifer that just really wants you to stop, and that young man does a nice job getting her shown. Once she stops and gets parked, she pulls herself together really well. Uh, here's another one I struggle with. From the back side of her shoulder back, she probably even goes into second. She's just a little bit more masculine and coarser headed for me. And, and as we talk about these cattle maternally, I'd like to change her up through that front one third. But from, their ne or from her shoulder back, that's when I love the depth of body. I love the hip and hind leg that she's got to her. I think that's a close pair in second and third. I moved this heifer up a couple of spots. I think she's just too maternal for me to get around versus some of these heifers that are behind behind her. She's not got the most perfect hind leg to her. She too is one that I could freshen up a little bit as she's getting a little bit compositionally too much on her, uh, but I don't see that up front. I see that more as I get around behind these cattle, but that heifer is really sound and functional in relation to the roan heifer behind her that's getting awful mature looking up through that front end. A little coarser headed, uh, a little wastier down through her chest floor today. I love the substance. I love the, the foot and the bone that she works out on today, uh, but a heifer that I just need to make a little more ladylike up through her front end. Heifer behind her, another good size female. If you need that size and performance, she gives you that. Probably a little more than I want in this type of class today. I'd like to see that hip and hind leg work in conjunction better as well. Then the heifer to conclude the class, we do drop down to a more moderate conventional kind. I like her size. I like her substance and shape that she's got. She's just too rigid off both ends to get any higher up from her shoulder down and from her hock down as well. Congratulations. Wow, I'll tell you what, if you want to see a class that is deep in quality and starts off with one that's really, really good and goes all the way down through with nice cattle, this is a class to watch, guys. I'm telling you, this young lady's brought one out that in terms of freshness and look, and, you know, just having that overall show heifer and cow power all blended into one. Uh, she's brought one out here that you got to admire. Uh, she's really cool through that front one third. She's good in that chest floor in terms of freshness and cleanliness. You get off of her and you study her underline. Her underline's got that shape to it that you like to see. She's, she's got a nice teat structure on her when you get back and you look at that. I like that about her. But that's one that I think is just ultimate in terms of type and kind and one that gets out and goes around the ring really nicely for that young lady. She does an awesome job of getting that one show. The next one here is no slouch. That's a heifer. It's got a lot of good things to her. I'd like to freshen that one up there in her chest. She's one that's got a little more bark down there than what I'd like to ideally see, and that's getting pretty nitpicky on a really, really good one. That's two heifers that are as good as anything I think a guy's going to see uh, within this class of today. That's for sure. Uh, the next one coming out, you like this heifer in terms of her type and her kind. I'd like to give her a little bit more four rib to compete with those two in front of her, but a really high quality heifer there in the third hole. Young men's heifer coming out next, another one of those, just like to pick her up there in her chest floor. You get off of her and you look at her from the side, she gets really deep there in the bottom of her chest. I'd like to pick that up and clean that up a little bit, but that's a heifer that's got a lot of good to her. Young men does a good job with that one too. A big, powerful, growthy kind of heifer coming out next, really fresh in her type and kind. You'd like to change that one a little bit in her spine when she gets out and goes, uh, but a really nice cow prospect. Young men's brought one out. Got a lot of good things to her. Just needs to be freshened up. A little too far gone for me today. A greener condition kind of one coming out next, but one that you just need to see dropping that flank. I'd like to shorten up that teat structure to get her up any higher within this class. The rest of the heifers coming on out here just need a little bit more balance to compete with the ones in front of them. 
First call, class 18, Herefords. First call, class 18, Herefords. Second call, class 30, Shorthorns. Second call, class 30, Shorthorns. And play scenes in class 25 over in your Shorthorn Plus female show are as followed. First place, weighing 1448, goes to entry number 85, MS Silky Bow 0422, exhibited by Emma McCallan of Woodsfield, Ohio. And second place in that class, weighing 1469, goes to entry number 86, Steck WSCC Katie Babe 231K, exhibited by Brexton Gabriel of Edson, Ohio. And third place, weighing 1475, goes to entry number 80, ZSF Grand Rose Mary's Primo, exhibited by Colton Anderson of Lake Village, Indiana. And fourth place in that class goes to entry number 87, Highland Jitterbug 200, exhibited by Kaylee Smith of Farmington, Minnesota. And fifth place in that class goes to entry number 84, Queen Elizabeth, exhibited by Ashlyn Christian Jensen of Hampton, Nebraska. And sixth place in that class goes to entry number 81, SULL JSUL Fitzwood Carrot, exhibited by Charlotte Boone of Owasso, Oklahoma. And seventh place in that class goes to entry number 82, MCF CWC Miss J. Lowe, exhibited by Andrew Hartman of Kokomo, Indiana. And please note that entry 79 was a scratch. Again, 79 was a scratch. And now in the ring over in your Shorthorn Plus female show is class 26 early spring yearling females. These heifers' date of birth range from March 24th through March 1st of 2022. Again, now in the ring is class 26 early spring yearling females. Your class 15 results of your Hereford female show in first place entry number 150, weighing 1,371 pounds, goes to GCC ML Cruella 800K, exhibited by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. In second place, entry number 157, weighing 1,436 pounds, SCG Miss Classy Diana 201K, exhibited by Olivia Neal of Osgood, Indiana. In third place, and also your bread and own winner for the class, goes to entry number 154, weighing 1,353 pounds, goes to GKB, GCC Notice Me, exhibited by Grady Cole Creamer of Waxahachie, Texas. In fourth place, entry number 158, Levi Womack. Fifth place, entry number 155, exhibited by Addison Rose and Hattie Young. In sixth place, entry number 900. 162, exhibited by Quentin and Andrew Ray. In seventh place, entry number 153, Taylor Loudman. In eighth place, entry number 163, Lena Ann May. In ninth place, entry number 160, exhibited by Emily and Allison Reeves. In tenth place, entry number 156, exhibited by Brennan Manning. And in eleventh place, entry number 148, exhibited by Scott and Garrett Hickey. This is your second call, Class 18 Hereford. Second call, Class 18 Herefords. This is your third and final call, Class 30 Shorthorns. Third and final call, Class 30 Shorthorns.
third and final call, class 18 Herefords. Third and final call, class 18 Herefords. Folks around ringside over in your Shorthorn show, please join me in giving your Shorthorn Junior Board a big round of applause for being out here with us today, helping cattle get uh, through the ring. Again, give a big round of applause for your short Shorthorn Junior Board. Well, I also compliment the junior board out here. I couldn't get this job done without them. So, yes, thank you for, for making that remark. This is a good class. This is a good all, all the way down. There's not a last place heifer out here. And, and I, you know, I struggle with because I can, I can justify probably this top trio in different ways. And 
the heifer that wins, I need to freshen up just a little bit more today. Compositionally, she's probably a little past where I, I just want her. Uh, but that front end is so good, uh, she moves better than this heifer in second. I think that's where I like the heifer in third, too, is because both of those heifers win on movement alone. When this second place heifer gets parked, that's when I really fall in love with her. But this heifer, when, when I walked him that last time, I knew she could have probably passed this second place heifer up, and that's what kind of sealed the deal for me. Uh, again, you know, I don't get critical on stuff too much, but, you know, I, I don't need that excess hair. She's deep enough. I don't need all that glued hair down underneath her belly. That's just my preference. I know the fitting world is a, is a money maker for our industry, but I love just natural uh, looking cattle, and um, I think that would help her for me, just my personal opinion, but that's one that's so cowy, so precise in her movement, I'm going to use her today. This young man's got a nice female. She's more moderate than the heifers on either side of her. I wish she was just coming out here and traveling with just a little bit more flexibility and freedom today, but that's a heifer that's made right. Compositionally, she's right. She's not maybe as long fronted to go along with her size today as the heifers on either side side of her, but I just like the way that heifer's built from the ground up and rear forward. This heifer in third, like I said, I, I had her up higher uh, because that heifer moves so well. When you stop and get her parked, she starts to look a little bit bigger out here for me. I don't think she's too big, just an observation. A heifer that's maybe not quite as attractive as the heifer that wins the class up in her head, neck, and shoulder design. I don't tell you that that hind leg's even perfectly built underneath that heifer. She just moves so good on it. The heifer behind her, I moved her up a spot because I just think she's got more of the type of those heifers ahead of her. Maternally, femininity, from the ground up, she's a heifer that's certainly sound off both ends. She's just more female looking than the heifer behind her. This heifer's getting awful masculine about her head. She's shorter necked. She opens up at the front side of her shoulder, but I love that heifer from her shoulder back. That heifer, beautiful in terms of depth and uniformity from her elbow back. She hits the ground really solid and uniformly off of those hind legs and squares she goes away from you. Uh, black and white heifer here, a very fault-free heifer. Heifer that's getting a little crest to her neck. She's not as precise out through that rump and not as powerful from the ground up as you get around right behind her through that center and lower portion of her quarter and stifle, but a really nice profiling individual. Red roan heifer to conclude the class, more moderate, conventional, a little more masculine as well, maybe a little steerier looking through that shoulder and head and neck design today coarser in her joint structure, but I like the easy and efficient look that she's going to have on uh, down the road long term. Nice class of cattle all the way from top to bottom. Fresh athletic uh, March born female to start off this class with. The young man's brought out one. I think in terms of just structure alone wins this class running away. I think when you set that one into motion, she just glides around the ring. You like the way she gets out and goes off of both ends, but really fresh in her condition, but yet still has some volume, some capacity, some actual mass to her, uh, stuff that's not fed into that one. Just natural, a curling type, type good good kind of calf there going out to win this class. The next two heifers are kind of the challenge for me. You got one that's big, stout, powerful, a little further along in her condition down in her brisket than what I'd like to see, but a lot of good things that go along with that one too in terms of top shape and dimension from pin to pin and the hook squareness that that one has in her. I think that one's got a lot of good things to offer. So, you know, even though she's not given a set of EPDs within this class, I think there's a lot of good things there that we're just going to go ahead and put that one into the second hole. The next one coming out, I like a lot of things about this one. I'd like to make her a little better in behind that shoulder. I'd like to pick her up at the top side of her shoulder there, but that's a heifer that's good and flat and angular in that shoulder design. Got some extension there. Not quite as neat and tidy as what our class winner is through that front one third, but that's a heifer I'd just like to give a little more width and dimension to that pin set than uh, what she has currently, but that's a heifer that's got a lot of good things to her. It goes out in the third hole. Another high quality heifer coming out next just lacks the power and the balance of those ones in front of her. I'd like to give her just a little, little more look uh, in terms of power and sheer mass. The next heifer, she is a massive built one, but she's one that gets a little out there in her shoulder. I'd like to clean her up there in her chest floor, but the young man does a really nice job of keeping that one together out here. The next pair of heifers coming out, real similar in their type and kind in terms of build. Big, stout, powerful ones, plenty of bark on them at this stage of the game, but 
going to go home and make nice cows for those young people. The next heifer coming out, another one of those really burly built ones, just a little shorter neck. like to clean that one up through a lower third there. Next heifer, kind of the same story. A heifer that gets a little straighter off those rear two, a little heavier in that chest floor than what I'd like to ideally see. And the next three heifers coming out just lack that overall look that I'm looking for today. Again, we just bring a couple of classes out for this division, but boy, we bring the quality with it, and that's what really counts and matters. Nice pair of heifers up here from our first class. Again, they were different, uh, but both justifiably could have won that class. They're just a little more my kind here. The young lady's got up in her head and neck, just smooth and slender up through that front end, just very maternal looking. Uh, moves very, very well. As I said in class, like to give her more depth of heel. That red heifer the young man's got, she's more powerfully built from the ground up. Didn't quite move quite, quite with the security and, and uh, uh, just smoothness that you see in that heifer that won her in that class, that beat her in that class, but that's a really powerful red heifer. Nice pair of heifers from this last class that I talked. That class was so, so good, and, and you could just justify different reasonings. Uh, again, I could freshen this heifer up a little bit more today, and I think she'd be right where we need her, but I think she's just so elegant out on the move, and then the young lady stops and gets her parked, certainly grabs your attention very, very quickly. And just a very fault-free, moderate, conventional kind of heifer there in second the young man's got that I just think has got a world of quality to her. She's fresh. She's feminine enough. Uh, maybe not quite that look up front that you see in the heifer ahead of her today, but I think a, a cow prospect in the making for sure. I like these two heifers together. Let's give them a round of applause. They'll be your champion in reserve division. First call, class 19, Hereford females. First call, class 19, Hereford females. Well, anybody that doesn't think that uh, taking the job to evaluate Hereford cattle at Louisville in the junior show isn't a difficult one, I tell you what, come out here and join me because uh, there's a whale of a set of heifers out here for this division. And I think that, you know, you're going to come down to personal preferences and types and kinds that I like uh, to get my champion in reserve out of this deal. But uh, I think you could stir it up and do whatever you wanted out here. But I'm going to go out here and pick the two that I like. Let's give these kids a round of applause for a great little show. And over in your Shorthorn Plus female show, your early spring champion female goes to entry number 97, SN Lucky Charm 220, exhibited by Madeline Berg of Osage, Iowa. Congratulations. And your reserve early spring, your reserve ch uh, division champion goes to entry number 36, PRNL Max Rosa 2220 style, exhibited by Cliff Carton of Martin, Georgia. Congratulations to those exhibitors. And those following long placings in class 26 are as followed. First place in class 26 goes to entry number 97, Wayne 1475, SN Lucky Charm 220, exhibited by Madeline Berg of Osage, Iowa. And second place in that class, Wayne 1293, goes to entry number 36, PRNL Max Rosa 2220 style, exhibited by Cliff Curtin of Martin, Georgia. And third place in that class goes to entry number 98, Wayne 1696, CF Mona Lisa 255 OP, exhibited by Mark and Sleep of Lafayette, Indiana. Fourth place in that class goes to entry number 89, Mad CMF Lisa, exhibited by Madeline Rhodes of Centerville, Maryland. Fifth place in that class goes to entry number 94, RFL Quantum Queen 3K, exhibited by Xavier Ferris of Whiteland, Indiana. 
And sixth place in that class goes to 99, exhibited by Reagan Harrison of Greensburg, Indiana. And seventh place goes to entry number 91, exhibited by Ella James of uh, Manton, Illinois. Congratulations to those exhibitors. And now in the ring is class 29 at Junior Yearling Females over in your Shorthorn Plus Female Show. These heifers' date of birth range from uh, February 18th through February 6th of 2022. Results of Class 16 of your Junior Hereford Show. In first place, entry number 177, GKB 8688, 22 Monroe. Exhibited by Dylan Wayne Conkamp of Clayton, Indiana. In second place, entry number 180, weighing 1,540 pounds, Triple T Olivia, 22. Exhibited by Natalie Geyer of Robinson, Illinois. In third place, entry number 170, weighing 1,443 pounds, GGSE Carter, 56K, exhibited by Ella Elizabeth Defford of Jarrettsville, Maryland. In fourth place, entry number 168, exhibited by Regan and Jordan Mitchum. In fifth place, entry number 167, exhibited by Quentin and Andrew Ray. In sixth place, entry number 182, exhibited by Reed Haynes. In seventh place, entry number 183, exhibited by Maddie and Marcy Harward. In eighth place, entry number 173, Chesney Robb. In ninth place, entry number 175, Emily Troyer. In 10th place, entry number 166, exhibited by Caden Conover. In 11th place, entry number 174, Adeline Sorgan. In your champion spring yearling female of your junior Hereford show, goes to entry number 150, GCC ML Cruella, 800K, exhibited by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Your reserve champion, Spring Hearling Hereford Female, goes to entry number 177, GKB 8688 Monroe, exhibited by Dylan Wayne Conkamp of Clayton, Indiana. Your champion, Brennan Owned, Spring Yearling Female of your Hereford Show, goes to entry number 154, GKB GCC Notice Me 9401, exhibited by Grady Cole Creamer of Waxahachie, Texas.
What an awesome pair of heifers uh, here in your Shorthorn Plus show. Uh, this top, really, trio is, is good, but it's this top duo for sure. Uh, the heifer that wins, uh, I just think, is longer. I love her head. Uh, maybe as much as anything, I love her shoulder. Her, she is just so precise, the, the appropriate angle to it, how she's laid in for the dimension that she's got. She's not the most powerful one we've seen today, but it's that length of muscle and the depth of muscle, but you put that angle and that smoothness of shoulder with a neck and a head like that on one, uh, you're gonna get my attention pretty quick. She's not as deep as the one in second. She's maybe not, maybe doesn't have as much of a wow factor. If you probably step back in the bleachers and analyze this pair, this is an awfully intriguing heifer in second. Up in her head as well, where that neck comes out of her shoulder, really sharp that through that tail head, but not as long rumped as this heifer. From this heifer, from her center rib on back, I think there's just too much heifer there. Love her out on the move, and love this heifer out on the move. Those heifers just travel with so much elegance, and, and that's a pair that I'd rather just watch them walk all day. Yeah, they look good stopped and set up, but I just love structure on cattle so much, I'd rather see them in the real world World environment walking out on green grass. Beautiful pair of females. The heifer in third, it's got a little brisket to her, not as quite as accurate off of that hind leg. She's longer striding and more flexible than the white roan heifer behind her today, but I could just pretty her up a little neater today like the heifers up in first and second, but I think a heifer that follows them quite well in this lineup. This young lady's got a nice heifer. Once you stop and get her set up, you love the top shape, you love the dimension from behind, well fitted, well shown, just gets a little bit coarser headed, a little bit different up through that front end and off of that hind leg for me to get any higher in this class. And then the blue roan heifer that concludes the class, young man's done a nice job with. Super balanced down her top line, a heifer that may be more accurate off of that hind leg than the heifer right before today, but she's not as long fronted, uh, she's not quite as smooth in her uh, joint structure today and probably compositionally comes out at the most disadvantageous. But a nice class of cattle, love that top pair. Second call, class 19, Hereford. Second call, class 19, Herefords. And placings over in class 29, junior yearling females in your Shorthorn Plus show are as followed. First place, Wayne 1613 goes to entry number 100. CF Mona Lisa 238 OPX, exhibited by Samantha Van Horse of Bowling Green, Ohio. And second place in that class, Wayne 1578 goes to entry number 104. SN Denim 217, exhibited by Stetson Reedy of Bethany, Illinois. And third place in that class, Wayne 1584, goes to entry number 101, MFS Myrtle Bomia 06K, exhibited by Tyler Dossi of Terman, Ohio. And fourth place in that class, goes to entry number 103, Cinnamon Sugar Maples 2203, exhibited by Jesse Maples of Waverly, Alabama. And fifth place in that class goes to entry number 102, KQ Dark Cherry 2022, exhibited by Ty Muhaney of Vaders, Wisconsin. Again, congratulations to those Shorthorn Plus exhibitors. Now entering the ring is class 30, junior yearling females. Again, in the ring now is class 30. These heifers' date of birth range from January 15th through January 1st of 2022.
Interesting class of February born females here. I think there's one though that just puts everything together in terms of completeness and soundness. Uh, it gives you that look and then just an overall package that you kind of gravitate to start off this class with. Uh, you know, she's got a little more wow factor through that front one third. She's got a big old square, nice hip in her. You like that and you like the muscle that that one has down her top, but still has some true shape and dimension to the center part of her body and that rib cage and gives you that nice round barrel shape to start off this class with. The true power one of the classes, this young man's here in second hole. That is one big burly, burly cow. Uh, not quite as neat through that chest floor as what our class winner is. Maybe not as square natural width through that hip as what our class winner is, but one that's definitely got a lot of, a lot of good factors you take home and breed and do some really neat things with on down the road. The next one coming out, very fresh and feminine, just really complete heifer. The skirt heifer here has just got a lot of nice things about her in terms of balance and eye appeal. She's not the biggest, she's not the stoutest, she's not the most powerful one we've seen all day, but just real complete. Young man's done a nice job of getting her presented. Another one with plenty of power to her. You'd like to just make that one a little better in her shoulder. She gets a little coarser there out at the point of her shoulder, wants to get up in her tail head when you set her into motion, but a nice little brood cow there. Another one, really long-bodied heifer, one that gets really crusty though when you step back and you look at her in terms of her neck. She gets a little deep deep there in the point of her chest. Uh, that's a heifer you just like to change in that front one third to get her up any higher for me in this class. Next one coming out, a horned female with plenty of mass and dimension to her. Just gets a little shorter back, a little heavier in that lower one third in terms of condition than what I'd like to see. See the kind of the same thing as we round out this class in terms of cattle. This is your third and final call in class 19 Herefords. Third and final call in class 19 Herefords. Results of class 17 in first place goes to entry number 197, weighing 1,562 pounds, VH 1326 Candy Girl, exhibited by Lily Miles of Morgantown, Indiana. In second place, entry number 195, weighing 1,767 pounds, green, 7317 Holly, exhibited by John Cox of Flemingsburg, Kentucky. In third place, entry number 196, weighing 1,405 pounds, DJF Tootsie, 3K, exhibited by Isaac Ross and Garrison Seibling of Brookville, Indiana. In fourth place, entry number 187, Exhibited by Reagan and Jordan Mitchum. In fifth place, entry number 191. Exhibited by Hadley Dunklow. In sixth place, entry number 188. And your bread and own class winner goes to Caroline Garrell. In seventh place, entry number 186. Exhibited by Olivia and Hadley Eubank. In eighth place, entry number 192. Exhibited by Eliana Powell. In ninth place, entry number 190. Sophia Taylor. In 10th place, entry number 194, exhibited by Lara Landers Franklin. Now entering the Hereford ring is class number 18 of your junior yearling females.
this is maybe one of the best classes we've had in terms of quality all the way to the bottom, and, and that's what I really like to see. You know, we can find these ones that get to the top end, but when you bring these classes out and, and you've got nothing but good things to say about your last one, that's, that's what makes this enjoyable. This top pair of heifers just come out, and they're my kind. They're sound, they're feminine. I think they go together very well. I think they share a lot of similarities. Sometimes you don't always get that, and I don't worry about that. Good comes in all kinds. Uh, but when you can get a pair that maybe kind of fit that mold, that, that makes it fun too. This heifer up front is such a cowy female. Her head just screams cow prospect. Uh, out on the move screams cow prospect. I just see so many, uh, so much future to her, indicators of longevity, uh, just simply how that structure and femininity is tied in with that skeleton and still you love the depth of body. And that heifer, maybe the intriguing part that you don't, understand is because you get captivated from the side is the amount of shape she's got from behind to go along with it. This young man's done a nice job. She's probably not quite as pretty out through her rump and tail head as the heifer right before her today. Maybe not that precision off of her hind leg until you watch her move and that heifer gets out and she stands second because of that femininity and that quality at the ground when you set her off on the go. Nice pair of heifers. Heifer in third I think fits the kind. Compositionally, I need to freshen her up today. This heifer is probably pushing more on her uh, than what I prefer, and I, I don't see that indicators up front till I get around behind her and study her back through that pin set and down through her lower one-third, but that's a really solid female. I like the foot size. I like the joint structure that she's got to her just like to freshen her up today. I think you can do a couple of things here. I use the blue roan heifer that's the most moderate of the class, but I think she's really, really good. Uh, she hits her stride very well, but you got to understand too, there's not as much skeleton for her to cover like the heifers on either side of her. But really solid out through her rump. She is fresher than the heifers on either side of her. More importantly for me, she's smoother. She's more correct up in that head, neck, and certainly shoulder design. The heifer to conclude the class, like I said, this is not a last Last place heifer. This heifer's got more to her up through that front end, up in her shoulder than maybe what I prefer, but a heifer, is she deep enough? Yes. Is she stout enough? Yes. She's longer bodied than that heifer that leads off right ahead of her, and that's where I can move her up a spot today. Uh, but a class of cattle, it doesn't matter what you do after you get past that first and second place. Those are really, really good females. Congratulations to all of you. Outstanding set of Hereford females over here. We start off with one that uh, I think in terms of just a show cow, we've got one out here. She's a cow and she's in the show ring, but uh, in terms of freshness, in terms of rib shape, and, and just that overall look and that, that she possesses in terms of uh, just gives you that killer look from the side, but yet still has that brood cow look to her. And the young lady's done a really nice job of getting that one showed. She's presented excellently out here. That's a nice female to start off this class with. A little more moderate frame female here in the second hole, one that's carrying a little more condition in her lower third than what our class winner is, but a really high quality heifer that falls into that second place hole pretty easily for me. The next one coming out, another one of those, a little further along than what I'd like to ideally see, but one that's got a lot of good things to her, very high quality female. She just needs a round bale for a while to freshen up. The next one coming out, it's a female that's got a lot of longevity bred into her, one that just a little deeper chested, a little plainer than the ones in front of her. And the next one, the young man's having a tough time with, just doesn't have the balance that I'd like to see today. And placings in class 30 over in your Shorthorn Plus female show are as followed. First place in that class goes to entry number 111. The weight is 1678 CFNB Denim 21 Primo, exhibited by Grady McGree of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And second place in that class goes to entry number 109, weighing 1642 BRKRE Dream Lady P204, exhibited by Garrett Risch of Spencer, Ohio. And third place in that class, weighing 1565, goes to entry number 106. AF Magical Marriage 2201, exhibited by Nora Kate McCall of Carrollton, Missouri. And fourth place in that class goes to entry number 110, UDE Meg 22K, exhibited by Quinna Moldy of Middletown, Virginia. And fifth place in that class goes to entry number 108, MFS Blair's Bonnie 6K, exhibited by Reed Utterback of Elwood, Indiana. 
Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. And now in the ring is the selection of your junior champion female over in your Shorthorn Plus show. Well, as we come out here to select our division champion in the Hereford show real quick, uh, I think there's two females that won their classes that are very nice in their own rights. In the respected second, she really got a lot of like, like a lot of things about them. But uh, I think there's one, though, in terms of just balance and eye appeal and cow power that comes to the top for me. I'm going to go out here and pick your champion in the reserve. Congratulations to these kids. Results of class 18 of your junior Hereford show in first place entry number 200 GSCC Melody exhibited by Marley Granis of Flemingsburg, Kentucky. In second place, entry number 201, weighing 1,394 pounds, Hawk Aubrey 3K, exhibited by Mary Carter Shirley of Sparta, Tennessee. In third place, entry number 205, weighing 1,499 pounds, Wildcat Cabaret, exhibited by Abigail Vander Vandergroff of Newton, New Jersey. In fourth place, and also your bread and own class winner, goes to entry number 202, exhibited by Zachary Imbruglio. In fifth place, entry number 204, exhibited by Jonathan Holmbrook. Well, again, just uh, two classes in this division, but they are powerful. Both the class winners and the seconds I couldn't say enough about and, and that's this has been a super fun division and I wish there was about three or four more out here and yet at the same time I probably don't need to make it that harder of a decision. These two heifers I think need to stick together. Um, how you do it is based on preference. The heifer up front, I, I, like I said in class, I get captivated about her head but most importantly, her shoulder. That is such a neat shoulder in her. It's how her neck ties into her shoulder. Her shoulder ties into her fore rib and the length of body that she's got. Um, she's fresh. She's feminine. She's a heifer that moves well. I don't know that she hits her stride quite as powerful as the heifer behind her. That heifer, you get her out trucking around this ring, the amount of shape and body that she's got and still that flexibility. That's where I get drawn to this heifer. Probably doesn't have maybe that front end. That's where they differ. But like I said in class, I see such a cow for this female. I maybe see that show heifer look up in that heifer up front. See the cow in this female here, that head, that neck. Her shoulder is probably more appropriate for her body type. It's not like that heifer right in front of her, but it's a good, good shoulder because she's got a lot to carry around this ring. And like I said, she does so with such freedom and excellence. And, and I just think both heifers are really, really good. I'm just going to go with this cowy female right here in front of me. She'll be champion, the young lady up front with the white flanked heifers reserve. The second place heifers are awesome, but this is a good, good pair of heifers. Thank you nice very job. much. And your champion junior yearling Hereford female goes to entry number 200. GSCC Melody KO4 exhibited by Marlene Granis of Flemingsburg, Kentucky. Your reserve champion junior yearling Hereford female goes to entry number 197. VH1326 Candy Girl O2K exhibited by Lily Miles of Morgantown, Indiana. Your champion junior yearling bred and owned Hereford female goes to entry number 188. LVF Jackie O, exhibited by Caroline Garl of Petersburg, Tennessee. Now entering the ring is class number 19 of your Hereford females. And over in your Shorthorn Plus female show, your junior champion female goes to entry number 111, CFNB Denim 21 Primo, exhibited by Grady McGree of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And your reserve division champion goes to entry number 100, CF Mona Lisa 238 OP, exhibited by Samantha Van Horse of Bowling Green, Ohio. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Now in the ring is class 33 senior yearling females over in your Shorthorn Plus show. These females' date of birth range from December 28th through November 17th of 2021. Again, now in the ring is your senior yearling females.
nice pair of heifers. Here's conclude our uh, Shorthorn Plus show with your classes, and this will also be your senior champion. I think it's close. I'm going to leave these heifers as they stand. Uh, the solid black heifer up front has just got loads of extension to her. She's long-necked. She's long from the shoulder back. She's still good in her top. As you get around behind her, I don't know that she's a stout right through that center quarter as the red heifer behind her. Uh, but I think that length of muscle, that length of body is going to prove to have some pounds advantage long term, especially when she's raising calves down the road. Uh, the roan heifer behind her, probably a little more complete. She's more compact, so I think it's probably easier for her to have a little more shape to that body design, uh, the depth of muscle that she's got to her. I don't know that she's quite as attractive out through her rump as that heifer that leads off today up in that tail head and pin bone. Uh, is she a little further along in condition? I don't think there's that much difference, maybe a tick, uh, but that's a close pair of heifers and a good pair of heifers. Congratulations to both young ladies. Nice job. And placings in class number 33 in automatic senior champion female goes to entry number 112, uh, weighing 16 at 19. CF Mona Lisa 1131 OP exhibited by Lindsay Jester of Moreland, Indiana. And your reserve automatic champion and second place in class 33 goes to entry number 113, weighing 1509 ACRC Cindy's Cricket exhibited by Addison Campbell of Eaton, Ohio. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We're now ready for the selection of your grand champion, Shorthorn Plus Female. Again, we are ready for the selection of your grand champion, Shorthorn Plus Female, here at the 50th Annual North American. For your senior yearling division winner, uh, we're going to start off with a cow with pigment all the way to the ground and a nice tight bag on her, nice teat size. I think that cow is doing what she needs to do. Looks like she's built for the long haul in terms of longevity, soundness, utter design. I think that's a very productional, functional kind of cow to start off this division and be your champion. The next one coming out, when you read that one on paper, she excels this group of cattle real easy. Uh, that's a heifer that's got a lot of good things to her. Looks like she's going to go ahead and cab by her two-year-old date there in December. Uh, just a nice functional one that reads really good on paper. We got a lot of good things to her in terms of structural soundness and integrity there. The next cow coming out, yes, she does have a calf at her side, but that's one I'd like to change in terms of her utter quality. She needs to have a little better attachment both fore and rear. I'd like to change that about her in order to keep her in the herd a little longer, but a nice productive cow with a nice little bull calf there at the side. The next one coming out is one that just needs to be a little closer to calving for this senior yearling division, one that's a little deeper in her chest floor out here today compared to those ones in front of her, but a nice functional production kind of oriented female the young man's brought out. The next one coming out just doesn't have the overall eye appeal and design that I'd like to see today. Results of class number 19 of your junior Hereford show. In first place, and also your champion, senior yearling female, goes to entry number 213. And your champion, bred and owned Hereford female, goes to HCF Miss Ava, 0002, exhibited by Marilyn Lewis of Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Your reserve champion, senior yearling Hereford female, goes to entry number 210, exhibited by Nora Cave of Elkin, North Carolina, exhibiting PDF 61J Montgomery Spirit. In third place, entry number 211, EF BPSP 2296 Queen, exhibited by Bailey and Shelby Pearl of Duquesne, Illinois. In fourth place, entry number 212, exhibited by Garrett and Scott Hickey. In fifth place, entry number 215, exhibited by Isaac Seedling.
Now entering the Hereford ring will be the selection of your grand champion Hereford female. And over back in your Shorthorn Plus sign, I would like to reintroduce your judge for today, Mr. Kyle Gooley. Kyle is the manager of CES and Presidented Cattle, a purebred Angus and Hereford operation in Wadley, Georgia. A native of Indiana, Kyle is a 2002 graduate of Purdue University and was a member of the livestock judging team. Growing up showing both Angus and Hereford cattle, he met his wife, Jennifer. They have two children, Grant and Diana Kate. Kyle is a past president of, Georgia, of the Georgia Cattlemen's Association. He has also judged in over 25 states as well as Canada. If you could, please give me a round of applause for Kyle Gooley uh, for coming out and evaluating your cattle today. Also, if you could put one more big round, uh, round of applause for your, your royalty here, your national Lassie Queens and state Queens, as well as your Shorthorn Junior Board. Again, we couldn't do this show without their help. Again, give them one more, one more big round of applause for your Shorthorn Board and your royalty out in the show ring. Kyle, the mic is yours. Well, indeed, it, it takes an army. And uh, what a refreshing place to be when you can sit at home and turn on the news and see the the shape that our world is in, but you get to come to Louisville, you get to watch the, the quality cattle, the quality kids on green shavings, and you put your worries at, at home and, and the rest of the world because this is a great place to be. It's an honor for me. I think the North American, again, I think the Shorthorn Association and Monty and his crew and these junior kids uh, for, for this event and, and allowing me to be here. I've been here a lot of years uh, growing up, just a couple hours up the road. This was my favorite place to come to, whether it was here or the state fair or the uh, junior national, the farm show. This place holds a very special place to my heart, but I don't know that any one of them is probably as special as this year. Um, I looked at my calendar the other day. A year ago on this day, I sat in a chair in the Georgia Cancer Center getting chemo injected into my body. I'm glad to be here today to talk about it. I don't need that. You know, you go through something like that, and, and I, a lot of questions go through your mind, but I don't ever remember asking why me. I didn't think that was an appropriate question. Nobody deserves that. There's not a single person that should have to ask that. But the important question for me was, what is God going to do through me? That was a little more important to me. Uh, you see, I was given a lot of gifts. I was given the gift to have a little more time with my family. I was given the gift to be able to come back to Louisville and walk on the green shavings again. Uh, but I don't know that any of them are more important than the opportunity that I have to share the love of Jesus Christ with people. And some of you might say the cow show is nor the place nor the time to do that, and I couldn't disagree more. Like I said, you turn on the news and you see the shape that our country's in, that our world is in. I don't know that there's a place that we don't need to share the love of Jesus with people. Um, he's given me a lot. He's given me this opportunity to be here today, and so I'm going to do just that. Uh, because his grace is way more important to me than a job. A lot of you look at this as a job. I look at this as an opportunity. It's a job to judge the cattle, but it's more important because it's a purpose to share the love of Jesus with each and every one of you. Uh, we don't deserve all that we've been given. I don't deserve to be here today, um, but I've been given an opportunity. The same gift that every one of you has been given today is just that. It's the gift of today. So the question that I ask you is what are you going to do with it? Are you going to worry about yesterday? Are you going to worry about tomorrow? Are you going to appreciate all these people here that are here to support you, your family back behind the stalls, hug their neck, thank them for what they've done for you, and likewise for those of you that love these kids, hug their neck when they leave this show ring. This show cattle thing is fun but it's not the most important part out here. It's these kids. 
I thank you again for this opportunity. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity to be here. I'm also thankful for the veterans. The people are here and are fighting overseas on our behalf, giving us the freedom to be able to come to a cow show and have fun with one another. God bless each and every one of you. I'm not going to talk about these cattle. I'll show you a couple that I like. It's been a pleasure. And your grand champion, Shorthorn Plus female, goes to entry number 111, CFNB Denim 21 Primo X, exhibited by Grady McGree of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Congratulations. And your reserve grand champion female goes to entry number 100, CF Mona Lisa 238 OP, exhibited by Samantha Van Horse of Bowling Green, Ohio. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. Well, back over here on the Hereford side, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm honored and privileged to be here at the North American on these green shavings. Uh, this facility was kind of the first place I ever came to outside the county fair and talk about a real eye-opening experience from a kid from small town Hope, Indiana. Uh, it was uh, definitely interesting. <laughs> but uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank all my family that allows me to do this and uh, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to get too tore up here. But uh, anyhow, awesome set of cattle. I'm not going to go through and talk all these things, uh, but I think there's cattle out here that uh, will definitely go on and win some major, major things. Uh, for me today, I think there's one out here that wins this thing running away with it in terms of freshness, in terms of power, in terms of soundness. It's going to be pretty easy for me to pick my champion. Uh, in all honesty, I think I could toss a coin on my reserve because there's a lot of really, really good ones out here that I'd be proud for my kids to take into the ring at any one time. And I just want to commend the breeders. I want to commend uh, the North American for putting on such a great event, the Hereford Association for organizing such a well-run show and uh, such a high-quality show. I know my kids grew up in it, and they appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Just uh, one more thing, thank you. I hope you appreciate uh, my opinion that I brought to the table, and uh, it's been an awesome experience. And ladies and gentlemen, one more time here in Broadbent Arena, the North American would like to recognize our judge today for your Hereford Show, Mr. Danny Harker. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Danny Harker, as well as our Hereford Junior Board for helping us put on today's show here at the 50th anniversary of the North American International Livestock Exposition. And your grand champion, Junior Hereford female, goes to entry number 150, GCC ML Cruella 800K, exhibited by Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Congratulations. And your reserve grand champion, Junior Hereford female, goes to entry number 177, GKB 8688-2296 Monroe, exhibited by Dylan Wayne Conkamp of Clayton, Indiana. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to all our Hereford exhibitors here today at the North American.
as we conclude our Shorthorn Plus show. Again, it's been an honor, and I especially enjoy this lineup as we bring our bread known champions out here. Let's give them one more big round of applause, especially our bread known exhibitors on a great show here. Congratulations to all of you. And your bread known champion female goes to entry number 68, CF Margie 2129 CTP, exhibited by Piper Cates of Mondock, Indiana. Congratulations. And congratulations to your Shorthorn Plus exhibitors on a successful show here at the 50th anniversary of the North American. Again, congratulations to your Shorthorn Plus exhibitors on a successful day here at the North American. Again, we will take a few pictures, and we will be moving on to your Cimital show here in the west side of Broadbent. Again, we will get some pictures taken real fast, and then we'll be ready for your first class of Cimitals here in the west wing. First call, class one and two, purebred Simmental females. First call, class one and two, purebred Simmental females to the makeup arena. The first North American Livestock Exposition was held in November 1974 in Louisville at the Kentucky Exposition Center. It began as a beef show for five breeds with Harold Workman as general manager, a post he would hold for nearly four decades. The National 4-H Livestock Judging Contest, held at the legendary International Livestock Exposition in Chicago since the early 1900s, found a new home at the Nail. From the start, the North American was steeped in tradition, from the now ubiquitous green shavings to a logo that communicated confidence, confidence that what began as a beef show would continue to grow and expand to a global reach. The North American seemed destined to inherit the legacies of Chicago, and before long, it was renamed the North American International Livestock Exposition. And the show did grow, with the sheep division coming along in 1975, and dairy, swine, and quarter horse shows following soon after. The National Collegiate Livestock Judging Contest moved to Louisville in 1976, and the North Americans' early success with all these events right out of the gate led to the honor of being chosen as the new home of the prestigious Saddle and well, Sirloin Club Herb Portrait show, Gallery. Uh, always, uh, More than 300 painted family. portraits of the livestock industry's most this, revered leaders moved from Chicago to the, the Kentucky the Expo Brown Center in 77. Uh, Each year since, during the North American, another honoree is added to this Hall of Fame. The North American Championship Rodeo was launched in 1979 as the finals for the Great Lakes Circuit. Today the Expo is the longest serving host venue for the Pro Rodeo Cowboys Association. In the 1980s, draft horse and dairy goat shows were added, and in the 90s, llamas and alpacas found their place in the spotlight. Boar goats and mules and donkeys joined in the fun in the 2000s, bringing the North American to a total of 10 divisions. The continued growth has been possible because the Kentucky Exposition Center has expanded as a world-class facility. 
the North American's educational reach has extended beyond youth livestock showing and judging contests to coveted internships, school tours, and a children's barnyard. And the commercial exhibits have grown into the ever-popular country store. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the North American International Livestock Exposition, we honor the visionary leaders, dedicated staff and volunteers, and exhibitors who raised the best of the best to bring them to the world's largest all-breed purebred livestock show. Hold on to your hats. The best is yet to come. Number one is the facilities. There are no other facilities around anywhere close to these. And uh, the people, we have uh, great people who work the show, friendly, uh, eager to help people out and to direct them to the right places, help them get their, uh, their animals uh, in, entered properly and in the right place. And uh, once those things are done, then we put the show on and uh, everybody takes a big interest in it and uh, wants to uh, make it the best show that it could possibly be. And they will go out of their way, work long hours, way up in the night sometimes to prepare the show, to get the show ready for the next day, and then work long hours and putting the show on. So it's a labor of love. Uh, you, you wouldn't do it for the money, <laughs> for sure. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, outstanding volunteers.